Hey everyone, happy Saturday. How's everybody doing today? Gary, Sandy, Jason, Spitfire, Salem, Caroline. It was good to see you guys. I um, wasn't sure if I would set this live today. Hey, Mel, Mel, Catherine. But you know what? I can't shake the feeling of what is going on here. I really thought we would have charges this week, and I'm shocked we haven't. Um, but, you know, I guess I'd rather them get all, all the evidence, have a solid, absolute solid case so that we don't have any chances to be taken like we did with uh, Casey Anthony. Hey, True Texan, Lori, Salem, again. <laughs> Did everybody have a good week? Hey, Queen Bella. That's right, Mel Mel. You tell them. You tell them, lady. It stinks. Today is another uh, rainy day. Hey, Melly. Good morning. Karma, good morning. Yeah, Caroline. I really thought we would have something, at least something, but nope. As of right now, we don't. And again, I will be patient. Hey, Shanley. Sweet Sativia. Patty. Anybody have big plans for this weekend? Hey, Thomas. Hey, Lindsay. Good morning, Lotus. Let me pull this up over here. Don't mind me for a moment. Yeah, something with this, this entire case just isn't fit and right. Oh, Antiquan, that sounds fun. Hey, Summy, driving four hours to Flagstaff to spend weekend with my hubby. Oh, who has been deployed for two months. Oh, my goodness, that is so exciting. Thank you. Uh, thank him for his service. And wow, I hope you have an amazing time. You have to be so excited. Found out Old Spice. At, you like, I don't like Old Spice because I don't like seafood, but I guess I'll share your excitement. You sound excited. Hey, the wandering sub. Pristine, drive carefully. It was better when they punched more and wore short shorts. <laughs> you might like rugby. Hey, guidance, good morning. So I've been following everything going on. And um, did you guys know? Oh, this one really makes me mad. Kayla Montgomery. Harmony. Kayla Montgomery was granted parole. After everything we know, listen, I get it. She helped the state. She helped, you know, uh, solidify a case. They needed her. They needed her for what she had, uh, what she knew. They still don't have uh, Harmony, but I understand they needed her to get at them. But I cannot believe, I cannot believe that she was granted parole. Hey, to wander, and the way that she, um, the way that they're they're talking, just like she simply, I get it. They arrested her for for lying, you. But the way they were speaking to her as if that was her only crime. Oh, it makes me sick. It makes me angry. I can't believe it. Hey, our whip, Cal Bell, Amy. I feel like there is much more horrifying stuff going to come out. Me too. Me too. I think we're going to find out that uh, Mommy Dearest Jennifer was more involved. Thank you, Caroline. Very disturbing. Did you guys like hear and see her parole hearing? Oh, now she does. All right. There are stipulations on it. You know, I, I don't care that there's stipulations. I, it still just infuriates me. Oh, sorry. I hit the mic there. Let me go ahead and play you a little bit. Do you guys mind if I play you a little bit of her parole here and before we jump into um, Stefan and Jennifer? She should have never been let out. Too soon, not enough time. No? Wildflower? Wait a minute. What's not Jennifer Soto? 
It's not, I'm sorry, you threw me off. I thought you were saying her name's not Jennifer Soto. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yes, it is. So I'm sorry. I Maybe I perhaps don't understand what... You don't think she's guilty? Uh, I don't, I'm don't. i sorry. I don't understand your sentence. Hey, Candy Kisses. I don't think she'll last either, Amy. And unfortunately, I think she'll be um, right back to drug use. I think there are going to be people, no matter where she goes, that does not want her in their neighborhoods. And I know that's a shame. You know, it's one of those things like you did the crime, you did your time, but I don't feel like she's done her time. I am go Bulldogs. I have a really bad feeling about that one as well. It breaks my heart. Let me go by what she was actually sentenced for. I know, I know, I know. I just hate it. Hey, Betty, these demented people are never held accountable, not the way they should be. No, and, and it is infuriating. Um, I mean, you know, I get it. They don't have anything to place Kayla besides her testimony that they need it for Adam. But at the same time, it's like you horrifically sat there, sat by. I mean, listen, she, they, they had a baby together, a baby girl, while their baby girl was above them in the ceiling. Makes me sick. And good for her. I'd be the same way as a mother. Absolutely. Stay the hell away from these babies. Hey, Yennefer. Well, there, here we go. If you guys don't mind, we'll, we'll take a little trip over there and, and check that out. Um, I won't make you watch all of it. I just, I'll, I'll speed through a little bit of it. And as more people come in, then we'll go into Stefan and Jennifer, which I believe charges are coming. Hey, Dina. First go on the record, and then we can begin your hearing. Okay. This is a parole hearing for Kayla Montgomery, number 92912. Present today is Chairman them. Roger Phillips of the New Hampshire Adult Parole Board. Also present today are parole board members Horace Enriquez and Trisha Thompson. So here's another thing. Based on everything I'm hearing and seeing when it comes to Kayla, um, I... What kind of prison is she in? You know what I mean? Because it seems like there's so much, uh, like she's like getting some type of special treatment. No, I don't think they will. I think street justice will take its place. Just Chrissy. Absolutely. Let the record reflect also in Tennessee representing victim services is Lauren Avery and representing victim services for attorney general's office. Is hey, Joseph. Martin. This is hearing you know what I noticed when it comes to Kayla? She tries to do these doughy eyes, like this innocent look. This is a woman who had children in her care and witnessed as not only witnessed, but participated as one was horrifically taken from this world. She walked Harmony in a bag to Adam. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The wandering sub since when? She did get. She did, sweetie pie. She did, and I think she will be a Casey Anthony the rest of her life. Come on. And we'll begin our, our questioning with board member. So, uh, basically, it's a bunch of I'm a victim. I'm trying to work the programs. I shouldn't have lied. If I didn't lie, um, they would have. The police would have been able to, you know, uh, help. Harmony sooner and all of that stuff. Hey, Angel Chips. Uh, hey, Gladys. And here are her stipulations. Um, she does her little crying thing. She has to speak into her kids. You know, oh, 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 shut up. You fed those kids baby food while you sold off your food stamps that you got in their name. So here's her stipulations. Um, you must complete focus. You must complete. And we're going to, all right, we've communicated, and we're going to grant you the privilege of parole. It will be on standard conditions. Um, you must complete focus. You must comply with your approved home plan. If it includes sober living, remain there for 90 days and thereafter in the discretion of your PPO and as recommended by your treatment provider. 
engage in the American Society of Addiction Medicine substance use disease level of care as the Department of Corrections and the late act recommends um, comply with the MAT or MAUD program, MAT or MAUD program, including prescribed medications. So basically keep taking your methadone, you know, work the programs, all of that. Ugh. Mental health in the community is needed and be compliant with prescribed medications. Engage in group addiction recovery, which may include AA and NA, as recommended by your LADAC and the PPO. I'm not going to lie. If I was in an NA meeting and I was sitting next to her, I'd leave. I leave before I do something stupid. Now, you know, they say principles over personalities. Yeah, you won't catch me sitting in a room with her. Never, never. I don't even think it's fair to make other addicts sit in a room with her. Do you know how many addicts are fighting to get back their children, fighting to um, rebuild relationships with their children, and you're going to sit next to this pig that took a child's life? Oh, no. No, no, no. Um, Not I. And of course, you have to be C3 and D3 for release, and ISP for 90 days, and then in the discretion of the PPO. Now that's going to be read back to you. Okay. Uh, and then uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them after the readback. Okay. And let the record reflect as follows. Today's decision is your parole has been approved. However, you must complete the focus program and you must have an approved home plan. If your home plan includes a sober living, you must remain there for 90 days and thereafter in discretion of your PPO. Imagine having to live in a sober living with her. The same thing as being in a meeting with her. You know what? She looks like a um, she looks like the Grinch, and I like that she has a mustache because I dislike her very strongly. Nowhere will be safe for her. I know it's mean, but I hope she reoffends. I, I think she shouldn't even be allowed out to give the chance to reoffend. I think she intentionally committed perjury to try to help Adam. The fact that she stated before she went to jail that she wishes she could have one more romantic evening with Adam tells me everything I need to know about her. Yeah, her mother won't even let her speak to the kids. They bring that up. You know, did you do the program? They have a program for these women where they can read a book to the kids, to their kids and like send the recording of them reading the book to them. And apparently uh, she never did that. So this is Kayla Montgomery. Uh, she was involved in a horrific case of Harmony Montgomery. Terrible, horrible case that just went to trial. Uh, she was the state's witness. Therefore, she got the biggest sweetheart deal I've ever heard to date. And it infuriates me. Hey, Megan. I think that the hard thing is they can't keep her for anything other than what she was charged for. Right, but keep her for the max time. Hey, what the crap? She could have. Thankfully, she didn't. But she could have had Adam's entire case dismissed on the basis that she's a liar. And as recommended by your treatment provider. Uh, you are to engage in ASAM substance use disorder level of care as DOC late act recommends. You are to comply with your MAP MAUD program, including prescribed medications. You are to engage in mental health treatment in the community as needed and be compliant with your medications, your prescribed medications. You are to engage in group addiction recovery. Basically, we're going to coddle the shit out of you. You're allowed out, but we're going to coddle you. We're going to hold your hand every step of the way. The fact that, yeah, and you're right. Was that you, Jameson, that wrote that she was cheek in her medicine? That explains the way she was on the stand? Yeah. Absolutely, she could have helped that little girl. She cared more about herself than her own children. She did. She did. She absolutely got a slap on the wrist. They slowly change the prison over time, so it's more towards re And it should be. So it's like going back to school. Some people believe just losing your freedom is not, but is it? Now, I, I believe, I mean, that was the intended purpose of jail was to read till, re uh, shut up, Jess. Um, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that this is coddling and I can't, I can't. Exactly, karma. I believe everyone that followed Harmony's case is infuriated with the plea deal. Absolutely. Did you see the guy, the innocent project got out of prison was found? Yes. Yes. And listen, I know Gary's not happy with me because uh, I was excited that the innocent project is picking up Scott Peterson's case. I did a poll. Majority of you disagree with me and that's okay. Um, 
But yes, so there was a guy that that was received help through the Innocent Project to be let out of prison. He went and uh, did a Joe Rogan show, I believe, if I'm correct. Uh, and everything. It was saying how the, the system's rigged, it's, it's racist, all these things. And then here he was walking around with a, a severed head. Oh, Carrie, you know what I mean? So you spend all that time in jail to get out a, and commit a horrific crime. Okay. No, she shouldn't have bar whip. Nope. Good morning, tattoos. Yes, Brantley. Yes. Give me just a second. You guys didn't hear about this? Horrific. Ah. Why isn't he coming up? Here it is. Sheldon Johnson. Sheldon Johnson. So Sheldon Johnson served time for a string of armed robberies. After he became an advocate for criminal justice reform, Johnson made several media appearances, including the Joe Rogan experience. A criminal justice activist who recently appeared on Joe Rogan's podcast has been arrested after a severed head was found in his freezer. Sheldon Johnson, 48, was charged with the murder, manslaughter, and criminal possession of a weapon. While conducting a wellness check in a victim's apartment, police found the man's torso with legs attached, authorities and sources said. Colin Small, 44, was pronounced dead at the scene. Johnson had become an advocate for prison rehabilitation after his release for a string of armed robberies in 1999. He it turned him into a criminal justice activist. Um, I got into school. I got my GED. From there, I got involved in correspondence courses, said Johnson. I started interacting with guys who were teaching aggression replacement training. I started to begin to understand how these concepts worked. Positive visualization is deep breathing, conflict resolution, all these ideas of change began to take place with me until he took the life of that guy. Well, that's a good question, Tess. Uh, I'll say this. I do know with cases like what we're seeing right now, when it comes to, um, why am I drawing a blank? The school shooter's parents. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Uh, but when it comes to, to cases like that, where we're now considering charging parents and everything, the systems are already overfilled, right? So does that become an issue? Is that is that going to bring concern for for space? And, you know, how do you determine that? So, yeah, sure, maybe. Um, hey, CJK, feel the love. Kraken, crumbly. Thank you, Lotus Flower. I don't know why I was just drawing a blank there. Hey, Kathy, the crumblies. Yes, the father's currently on trial. But this guy, imagine this. Queens Defenders, the non-public law firm where Johnson worked, declined to comment. I, I guess so. I guess you did decline to comment. Criminal justice activists arrested after a head found in freezer. WTF. You spend all this time in jail on a wrongful conviction. You get out and you take somebody's life. But what's ironic about it, again, is if you read down here how he claims all these things, you know, Interacted with guys who are teaching aggression replacement. Clearly, your teachings didn't last or really set in. Hey, Grandma Sherry. Yes, the crumblies. I bet they would decline. Hell, wouldn't you? Um, one second. Where did I put my phone? Here it is. Dun, 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 dun. I, I heard that bizarre, absolutely. Most prison systems don't have great. No, they don't. Um, Actually, I'll tell you what. So as, as many of you know, I was a teen mother. My um, 
my daughter's father, he was in juvie actually as I was pregnant, ironically, you know, red flag galore, but being young, dumb, you know, middle school sweethearts, whatever. So he ended up being in juvie, gets out, and then a little bit later into adulthood, he goes into jail. Needless to say, he is now one of those people that find more comfort being in jail than on the streets. Um, I don't know what it is. You hear about it a lot. Obviously, I can't relate. I've never been to jail, never been to prison. But he spent so much, I guess, of his youth and young adult years in prison that he finds more comfort being inside there, being with the uh, the scheduling and everything than he does being out on the streets. And that's a shame. That's really a sad thing. But, you know, it's the way it is, right? A lot of them just learn how to act better. Well, that's what it sounds like this guy did. He said all the good things, everything he needed to know to turn around and be a complete creep. And, and go to jail and commit a worse crime than armed robberies. They don't know how to act in the world. Yeah. Lifelong criminal. Yeah. The kill shy. You don't have to do that. Thank you so much. Happy Saturday, Lily. So uh, anybody else shocked that charges have not been officially made in the, the uh, death of Maddie? I don't think I, I, there's no way I'm the only person that's shocked. And the more I look at this timeline, the more I think about it, things just don't make sense. The freedom is overwhelming for them. There's poor system made through release. Shawshank, they get institutionalized, institutionalized, can't be an adult if you're in jail. I don't mind bees, but I do like Beyonce, <laughs> Jay-Z. But the Crumley case is only because they knew the kid's mental status. That was yesterday during the trial. Yeah. I'm confused and shocked. So I think for me, I think they are absolutely uh, possibly looking at charges for the mother and absolutely and possibly don't go together. But <laughs> that's where I'm at. I would not be surprised if we find out that Jennifer is arrested. One thing I really has really crossed my mind that I can't get out of it is who put Maddie in the jeans. We heard now from both Maddie, uh, I'm sorry, from Jennifer and Stefan that Maddie was wearing shorts. We know now because of the dumbass officer that accidentally uploaded the photo that she was in jeans. A little confused by the fact that they haven't done anything yet, but I do believe that the mother's of on some way, at the very least, she knew what was going on. Absolutely. And I do think that um, the mother got a lawyer because she knows. <clears throat> that's a long time to wander and stuff. That's like coming out to a twilight soon. Everything's different. Are they waiting for mom to turn on Stefan or are they waiting for Stefan to turn on mom? You think the mom, so I was thinking that with the croc, but I can't see him not speaking out now, especially since they found what they found on him. I think that if, if that were the case, I think Stefan would be, uh, would be singing like a canary. I think he would absolutely throw her out there. Now, you know what else? <clears throat> a lot of people are saying, if you go over the affidavit, which I do not recommend, but if you've read it or you've heard of it, you do know that the date of the, uh, the videos and photos in question that were found on his phone, they were, they go back to 2022, right? Matter of fact, her birthday, her 11th birthday. That's where we have photos and videos, right? But how much time did it take for him to feel comfortable enough to make those recordings? Lord have mercy. That scared me. How long did it take for him to feel safe recording? And she was cremated. No other chance for, I, I don't think, say, I don't like it. Committed a third degree felony for lying about investigation. Happy Saturday, Lotus. Sorry you can't stay. I'm a firm believer in an eye for an eye. When you're convicted of murder and death to you, do not wait 20 years to carry out the sentence. Yeah, let's, listen, we can make a lot of space in prison and save ourselves a lot of money. If we're putting crumbling jail, that was my sentiments, Sami. Absolutely. If, if we are, and we are acknowledging that, that Crumley's, they failed, right? 
they knew their son had mental health issues. They dismissed it. They told him to toughen up. They blew it off. Well, we know without a doubt for at least two years, and I'm thinking longer, under the care and the love of her mother, I don't know if you say love, and the safety of her own home, she was violated. That's neglectful. Right. And the fact that he mentioned there's no cameras. Wouldn't surprise me if they found the same kind of stuff on the mom's phone. Polish, good morning. They only have him on moving a body, which is a misdemeanor in Florida. They have 180 days, but I'll prosecute on higher charges. He is already dead man walking. Right. Exactly. And you know what? None of your business. I'd rather them have all their ducks lined up before they jump the gun. I mean, again, I hate to keep saying it, but Casey Anthony. They did not have enough. And unfortunately, when you were on the jury, you can't go by your emotions. You have to go by the facts that are presented to you. I want them to have enough facts. I know we can get him without a doubt on the abuse he put her through, but I want justice all the way for Maddie. And you know what? In the words of her mother, whatever that means. The fact that a mother with a missing child would say, I just want her home, whatever that means. Dead or alive is what that means. You know what that means. Fuck you. I think she knew more. Do you, Darcy? You think she was involved? They couldn't say she was dropped off at school. Yep. I don't know. I don't know how Florida is when it comes to uh, minors. Now, I will say a lot of states don't because of minors. But the fact that they put the affidavit out and how horrific that was, I don't know. I I'm curious to find out. Hey, Busta Moo. Good morning. Bust a moo. <laughs> I like that. I believe that. I believe that, Alicia. I believe that. I believe uh, her classmate, uh, a young boy, came forward and said that, um, and said that basically. And then we have the information coming out that she was afraid to sleep alone. Why well, wonder why? Now, what I'm also wondering is was it stated she was afraid to sleep alone? as an excuse to why he was sleeping with her. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, did he tell her, say that you're afraid to sleep alone or, you know, say you're having nightmares. Did he groom her to that extent? Absolutely, Georgia. I get it. Believe me, I get it. It has to do with time and grainy. Prosecutors prefer to take as much time as they can before laying charges because once they are charged, they only have so much time to try the person. Right? Your right to a, a speedy trial, right? No other well, ducks in a row. Absolutely. Hey, one juror matters. Thank you. Friendly reminder be nice to one another. Tell a random person a joke. Check on. Nobody laughs at my jokes. Stay fed, happy, healthy, safe. Perform random kindness. I love it. Hey, Captain Avi. I think she ain't speaking because she knew she got caught up in her lies. I think you could tell her lies. Did you guys see that the, um, the behavioral panelist came through? So glad. So glad they came through. I knew they would have great insight. Hey, Kendra. I think the mom was very disconnected from her child's emotions and dedicated her. Well, did you see the way she was rubbing up and comforting him? Uh, yeah. Dead enough on Casey Anthony. Prosecutor dropped the ball on the internet searches and also didn't push enough that could find her guilty. Well, I think the problem was he wanted, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it was the degree of the charge he was going for. You think the mom's very codependent? I'll have you know the kill shot. Every year for my son's birthday, from the age of six up, he would get a, a joke book. It was like, you know, uh, it says his age on, like eight-year-old joke book or whatever. So I'm just saying, I got a lot of jokes under my belt here. I, I will challenge you to a joke off. I think you guys are funnier than us. <laughs> now that's funny. The fact that the mother lied about the events of that morning shows to me she knew way more. I, I can't get over the way she was comforted in him. Oh, she's rubbing all up on him. And you poor, you know, no. All right. You haven't seen it. You know what I've seen? How do you got, oh. How do you guys feel about this? So I know that the leaked photo has found its way to YouTube. 
right? Somehow people were able to get the live footage of the day they looked for and found Maddie. <laughs> and we're, we're seeing it on YouTube and yes, yes, we, it is blurred, you know. Oh, thank you so much, Millie. You haven't seen it. They released them since Aiden Fuji killed Tristan Bailey. They made a law against releasing crime scene photos of minors. Oh, Mo, you're right. The sheriff did break that law. And now we are seeing it rotate across YouTube, blurred. I still don't like it. How do you guys feel about it? Are we that desensitized? As, a, 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 as, you know, true crime sleuthers that we are okay with that photo on our screens. Granite blurred. I get it. As a disclaimer, more channels should give them. I feel like when, you, when you're walking into a discussion such as true crime, um, I know people do the whole triggers and disclaimers and all that. I don't know. If I, if that's necessary, I think we, as adults, we know what we're opening up to, right? Um, now, given what he's showing, yeah, he should. He absolutely should. That was my thought, Mello. Mello says maybe she was occasionally drug and assaulted. That's when he took the pics and videos. Maybe he drugged her too much this time and she OD'd. That was my thoughts. And maybe he was doing it to the mother. And that's why she overslept. I don't think anyone should show it. That sheriff should have been sacked. I don't ever want to see it. Shouldn't be on here. Doesn't matter if it's blurred. This is a child. And we've seen in Kylie Rodney's case where some creators go to the extent of unblurring the photos. You know? Uh, yeah. I'm, maybe I should, Laura. Um, I won't watch anything of his anymore, to be quite frank. Anthony, the way he behaved. Matter of fact, I saw somebody playing this video last night. I couldn't help but think, did you email him? Sorry. Totally going to be ahead was abused as well. So, you know what, Tess? I actually had a stream set that was my thumbnail. And it had Kayla Montgomery, Jennifer Soto, and Elijah Hughes' mother. And I, and on it, I was asking, does is this the face of evil? Faces of evil? Or are these the faces of fear? Do you think that these women were uh, allegedly abused enough that they could get away with that? Because I've heard people offer that to Kayla Montgomery as well. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm not, I'm, I'm a mixed channel. I'm just a non-professional. Um, you know, I, I just like to talk about topics. I don't consider myself a real true crime channel or anything of the sort. Uh, but I also think that you should maintain um, some level of decency, especially when we're talking about children, right? And, and I don't care if that if you're considering yourself a real true crime channel or not, there should still be decency. He has a low tolerance for stupid. Yeah, see, I think he's stupid. So <laughs> sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. The way he behaved was was totally disrespectful completely disrespectful. It was a tantrum of epic proportions. I thought we left on good graces. I uh, even deleted comments in my comment section he was uncomfortable with. He came back and made a comment that was on topic with the stream. I thought we kind of, you know, virtually shook hands and moved along. And then he went on to trash me. So, but for, I for sure have been desensitized since I've been in true crime community. Right, Sammy, absolutely. So, and that goes to what happened with Sav Girl, right? We all know Sav Girl showed the autopsy photos of a child, which was horrific. Um, and I truly believe that Sav Girl did not think what she was doing was wrong because she was so desensitized due to her coverage, you know? Right, Karma is how I felt. Uh, I can't see the comment. Thank you so much, Catalina. I seen somebody... Uh, I haven't seen it. I don't want to see. My son was murdered 15 years ago in April. I had a hard enough time getting through the autopsy. There's no way I could have handled looking at the photos. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. 
I'm with you and him, but I've always found him condescending. That's what it was. He was condescending and rude. We both apologized. I thought all was good. All right, Laura. I'm sorry. I don't, I know you like him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't want to bring him up. I apologize. I, I don't throw it against, I don't use, hold it against you. I, I respect you. I appreciate you being here. I'll move along with the topic to not make you feel uncomfortable. So Sav Girl, um, Gannon Stotch, Sav Girl requested his, his files, the files on his case. Within them held the autopsy photos. Sav Girl knew that YouTube would take it down and that some people would see it that didn't want to see it. So she went ahead and put it on her Patreon under a paying level. Everybody took hold of it, even News Nation. Another creator did it as well that got less recognition. Um, and and Sav Girl was put through the ringer for it, rightfully so. You know, rightfully so. What she did was horrific. But I believe she was that desensitized. I don't think she did it. And the idea of, oh, I'm going to make money. Or the idea of... Um, you know, I, I just think she didn't realize what I think she just was being stupid is what I think. Be kinder than necessary. Love your name. New here. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. I was wondering if others were so put off, but great. Absolutely. So put off. Yeah, her Patreon. Oh, Catalina, I'm sorry for your loss. The case of Gannon. Right here, busted move. If you, if you want to look it up, the whole world knew. Uh, my fear, I, I did have a fear for Sev at that point. I know many people didn't have any, any empathy for her. I did. I felt like that was a lot of pressure on her, and, and and I feel like she made a very sincerely stupid decision. But I don't think her intent was cruel. I started watching him and had to stop because he's very rude to people in chat with his I don't. Yeah, he's better than he's a real true crime channel. We're all beneath, you know. Oh, absolutely. NC did it for money. I don't think Sav Girl did. I think NC went and took it from her. That's what I think happened. I think NC found out that Sav Girl had them. She went, took them off of Sav Girl, and did the same thing. And I think her intentions were, were malicious, unlike Sav Girl. But, you know. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. Thank you. Took hold of it and lied to make it worse. Oh, yes. That was horrific time. She is Paula. She is the one who did it. She did double down on it. That was the issue I had, which led me to stop watching her. So now here we are, right? Here we are with another case. Uh, we had Kylie Ronnie's blurred image put out. That was unblurred. Now we have Maddie Soto's image being put out, although blurred. What do you guys think? What do you think of it? I don't think it should be on here at all. Thank you so much, Kathy. Absolutely, Jason. Uh, okay, so the behavioral panelist, as as you all, not good, right? Um, I'm I'm shocked you're familiar with Blondie Lux. Love your Disney character giving a middle finger. <laughs> it is awful. Ripped my head off for saying his background music was distracting. Did you get snapped at? Yeah. Absolutely. And like I said, Kendra, we do know there are some creators or some people out here that will go to the extent of unblurring. And that is uh, terrific. So the behavioral panelists did a stream. Uh, we all were hoping for it, waiting for it. They came through and they analyzed Jennifer Soto's behaviors. I love it. Or if you're not familiar, uh, they are a fantastic panel of men that are professionals and body language, and they give a great overlook. And, and I agree with a lot of what they said. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? But we're we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. So the fact that she says her entire family's a mess. So my uh, have any of you heard the same? I've heard that the family is saying how she's being completely odd, how this behavior is not like her, and they feel like she's hiding something. 
So Bird and Proust says there's a difference between being desensitized and lacking ethics. You can be desensitized and still maintain the ability to have to have make good ethical decisions. Desensitization isn't the issue, in my opinion. Huh. I, I see where you're coming from. The kill shot. I challenge you to a duel. Joke off anytime, anywhere. <laughs> you got it, kill shot. Certainly will. Thank you so much. This interview I saw, she's totally lying. No emotion. I creep in the background. Yeah. She's not convincing at all. Chris Wass, I hope she's safe. I just want them home. Mm-hmm. For commenting on another channel. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you file a missing report? <laughs> we filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like 4.45 uh, yesterday, uh, 4.45 p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning, around between 8.45 and 9 o'clock in the morning, she went missing. I can't stand the fact that she says they contacted police at 430 and the police say, hold up, wait just a minute. No, you didn't. And what really makes me angry about it is we got from Jennifer, she is claiming herself that the school did not notify her of Maddie being absent, right? How is it you called the police prior to finding out she was absent? We know you are lying. It wasn't 445. And isn't 445 late for a school pickup? Now, what time do your kids get out of school? I'm in a different state. We get out between 245 and 3 o'clock. I don't know. I don't know. Is it common for school to go that late in Florida? Do any of you know? Any of you live in Florida? For Nicole Kessinger to be looked at? Oh. I don't know. I haven't seen that channel, Jason. That's late, right? 2.55. My kid's school was, wow, 8.45 to 4.15. That's late. Notify me by text or email. 5 p.m., Stacey? Wow. Middle school goes that late, Megan? My kids start at 8 or done at 2. Wow, I feel like that's a really long day. 9.30 to 4.00? Well, that's about, okay, so that's about the same. We're 8.30 to 3. No, you're fine, Jason. That is late. I wouldn't like school out that late. No. You know, I heard one time over in China that the kids go to school. They go home for lunch. So they eat with their families at lunch. And they go back to school until, like, dinner time. Oh, really, Darcy? That's interesting. See, the last time he was in my stream, I was covering JLR and Bullhorn Betty. And there was a commenter that said hi to him. And he said, oh, I haven't seen you in a while. You haven't been at my channel because you're in trash places like this. And I let his little smart comment slide then. Uh, amazing. He keeps finding his way back to my trash place. You know, birds of a feather. 8.30, 3.30. Yeah, okay. So that, I, well, all right. So she claims. So she's saying, we know that's not true. The police absolutely said no 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 four hours later than that you called us my two queens sometimes they call quicker than i can call them to say you know an absence we have we have early wednesday as well spitfire 4 15 i feel like that's so late hey chris happy saturday 4 30 picked up 8 25 wow man these kids are in school for a long time um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Sorry. Yeah. So there's been a lot of discussion uh, on if it's a bird or if it's a dog feeder. The more I hear it, the more I hear it is a, a feeder. You can hear it say, come get your food, you know? So 
what do you guys think? Are you guys thinking put a one for a bird? Put a two if you're thinking it's a it's a pet feeder, a dog feeder, if you will. Exactly. CJK. Exactly. <laughs> My sediments. The smirk here bothers me too. Nothing would have me smiling, especially something so fucking stupid as a pet feeder. I would simply speak louder. My child is more important. When this mom said what she said, I knew she was lying. Then she starts laughing. You think it's definitely a bird? It is, but it's not my real kitty. Wow. Okay. So we're still conflicted on that. Okay. You have one. Can you tell us a little bit about it, Mary Jane? Is it preset? Do you uh, do you put the voice into it? I'm curious to hear that. That's what I'm wondering, Chanley. Is there a remote to set it off? Kids in the damn wagon and Chick-fil-A, but on popular opinion, I think the mom on a live Maddie, I said what I said. Lindsay, you're not alone, honey. Hey, jet lags. Been a while. Good to see you. Yeah, what's it called, Mary Jane, if you don't mind? Good an good question, Jennifer. You can record a voice. Does it have a remote button or a preset? The dang feeder again, Megan. You can use the app on your phone to make it go off. Because people are saying that he set it off as a distraction. I don't see why he would distract her at that moment. I seen them, Blondie Locks. I seen them. To agree to disagree, you can donate to gr a grand GHI in the sake you disagree with him. He blocks your room channel and says you don't need your money. Well, that's a rude thing to say since it's going to uh, supposedly going to organizations. I think every dollar counts. Queen Bella. Preset timer. Okay. Mine is called Furbo, and I can see my home when I'm gone. It's a camera as well. That is the other thing I was wondering. Do they have cameras? You know, something that crossed my mind. Uh, you know how Alexa's always listening to you unless you push the, the red button on there? Has an Alexa device ever came through and helped solve a crime? Because it's constantly listening, right? I'm just wondering. That should be it. Sorry about that. Wow, All yeah. Right. I'll go first on this one. Um, right out of the gate, it looks like she's got some kind of neurological disorder, which she doesn't. She's just jiggling her leg. I used to do that on here, and people would say, what's wrong with Scott? Because when I jiggle my leg, it looks like... I literally, I'm jiggling my foot right now as we speak. I do that as well. Uh, so I get what he's saying. She don't realize it makes like your head move and everything. Like I was doing this, looked like I had some kind of disease, but I, I, I didn't. I was like, I didn't even realize it until I watched it, until I watched me doing it. So that's what we're seeing with her. And it's good we're seeing this because as stress rises, the more that foot or that leg jiggles and we see her start jiggling even more. So this is going to be, as we go through these videos, keep an eye on that. And remember, the more stress she becomes, the more she jiggles her leg. And we can see her stress level go through the dang roof here at some point at, in some parts and in this one as well we're seeing compressed lips we're seeing all the, the the great cues of stress so you know what loxy it's funny you say that so lox it's not funny but loxy says is it possible maddie hurt herself that's why they haven't charged him yet he probably drugged her and they're waiting for tox report has anybody else had that cross their minds that perhaps Maddie took her own life and they knew that with that, they were still going to be found out. Kraken says no. Grandma Sherry. Yep. Busta. Okay. Queen says no. Mary Jane says no. Okay. So a lot of you did not consider that. Oh, you're changing a no. Okay. I, I was considering that. I was wondering that. Nup. I like a nup. No, no. No. Okay. All right. Did the school alert anyone that she didn't turn up for school? Not until the evening. Well, wow, lots of no's. Okay. It is an interesting thought, which is why I was thinking it. Uh, you think the mother did? 
How about a nerp? <laughs> hey, Callie. No. It is a terrible thought. It is. It sounds like his recorded voice. So do I in 5678. That we look for and, and teach um, about. And this is a great example of that. Now, when the dog, when they start calling the dog and she stops and starts smiling, this tells us so much because not only are we looking, are, are we seeing things that we're, that we know cause stress, we're not seeing a couple of things. We're not seeing tears. We're not seeing the stress or concern we should be seeing in there. We're seeing what is, looks to me like fear most of the time. So you could say, oh, she's fearful What's for what's the matter, what's wrong with her daughter, is, where is she, is she going to be okay, all that. I don't think that's what it, I don't think that's the fear she's looking for. You know, that we're looking for at this point or what we're seeing. So when 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 they find us finally finish calling the dog and things start quieting down, she quits smiling. She automatically goes, she resets and gets back into that fake sadness she's got on her, on her face. She doesn't even know how to do that. Then I love it. I love that Scott, Scott just said it's fake sadness. It is fake sadness. Man, Chatter, I think it's been um, determined that it's actually a dog feeder. Matter of fact, a, a commenter in here says they have the same one. Fake sadness. That's the first thing I said the first time I spoke about it, Silent Angel. Absolutely, I think that. I think there is a chance that he was drugging both. It caused mom to oversleep, but now we know she lied, so I don't know. Why could law enforcement see she was, wouldn't the mother be able to tell? You know what I think bothers me a lot, CJK? That the mom asked them to meet at the school. She didn't want them in their apartment. Now, I'm being told also that uh, when they asked to, you know, look around her house or the apartment or condo, whatever you want to call it, the mother said no. I don't know if that's true. Has anybody seen that to be factual? But that would be interesting. Why did you meet them at the school? Hey, tickety boo. I'm going to be productive before I go off on this troll. <laughs> I know everyone is different, but if my 13-year-old kid was missing, you want to find me at home at the kitchen table. Nope. She doesn't seem afraid to him to me yet either. The way she was rubbing up on him and comforting him, I don't see fear. Now, granted, people showing in different ways, right? That they needed a warrant. Who makes them get a search warrant? She knew they would find something. And again, Queen Window, Widow, we know there's images dating back to two years. But how long did it take to build up the confidence to take the footage? I don't think it started the day the footage started. You know what I mean? And when the question starts again, that leg jiggling starts and she starts jumping around again. So let's keep in mind as we go through this, again, I want to stress, watch the shaking because it makes all the difference in the world as far as letting you know what's happening from a perspective of stress on a human as they're going through questioning like this. And there's a reason that she's being that stressed. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so same as you. Interested first off, is is it something about the neurology? Could it be stimming of some sort? And then we get, during her answers, uh, very little eye contact. Her eyes go up. Again, could be something with a with a, a neurotype. It is certainly out of the ordinary in this kind of interview situation to not get direct contact, uh, eye contact with the interviewer. So why do the eyes uh, disappear up? Uh, Right. To me, it appeared the mom was on some type of substance. Anybody else feel that way? And you're right. So what did they try to clean up while a search warrant was obtained? Don't forget, they had from 8.40 a.m. to at least 4.30, if we're to believe the mother, that she called at 4.30, although the police say it was 8. That is a lot of hours to clean up a scene. Yep. Okay. A lot of you thought that she looked like she was on something. Okay. Yep. All right. Can we trace where Stefan and Jennifer were for those hours? <laughs> I know, Matt, I, because we keep hearing different things. 
I guess we don't know for sure. Do you think she has mental issues? But would those mental issues make her behave like this? Hey, Carrie. I mean, I have mental issues. That's not going to stop me from being a distraught mother. You know what I mean? Right. Come in. Come in. Here's her bedroom. Here, you know, here's where we were this morning. Help me. Help me. Are there, can, can you find anything? Are there any clues? Where's my daughter? Absolutely. At, at, at this point, again, could be neurotype, but let's, let's, let's see. Uh, the, the, the shaking is interesting because, as you're saying, Scott, when the dog is called, everything stops. Just everything disappears. So that makes me think, you know, to your point, uh, this should go up even further under stress. Uh, around the dog, it, everything goes. The voice changes. We the voice changes. So I hate to keep pausing, but you know what, our whip? I'm going to say it. If we know that Stefan was at, was it 730? 735-ish, we have Stefan throwing things, throwing her backpack and computer in a dumpster, right? At 819, we have Maddie deceased in a truck. Who put Maddie in the jeans? Where was Maddie from 7.35 a.m. till 819? She wasn't at work. She was not at work, Loxie. She claims she overslept. She claims she overslept, but she also claims at 8 a.m. she saw Maddie getting dressed for school. I thought at 8.19 he returned to the school. I mean, I'm sorry, to the, to the apartment. And that's when we saw Maddie was deceased in the car. Or maybe it was her dressing them, dressing her. Perhaps mad chatter. Perhaps, perhaps it was a jealousy thing. We heard a voice at the start giving her name and the, the letters involved with her name and how clear and strong the voice is when she starts into the interview, that all disappears. That's really interesting. It makes me think that all of this could be some kind of effect uh, that's being done on purpose. I mean, I don't know for sure at this point, first video in, but it does make me wonder, how are you able to be in this heightened emotional situation and then it stop immediately? Interesting. Uh, oh, by the way, she says we had dropped her off. We had dropped her off. Let's see what happens to that. Greg, what do you got on this one? First, guys, is a parrot. That's a parrot talking in the background. It's going, oh. saying whatever it's heard over and over and over. The reason she oh. knows how long it's going to last is birds are creatures of habit, and they do the same thing over and over and over. So she's waiting for the parrot to finish. Is the reason I thought it was one of them calling the dog. No, it's a parrot. Parrot going, food, food. You Where know, did you hear about that? How do you know that? I just know. I know birds. I've been around birds. This is so it's so cute that they're so confident what they're saying right now. I wish we get an absolute answer on what it was. Is it a parrot? Is it a bird feeder? For one of Jen's friends, can't verify it's taken with grain of salt, but it's interesting. Ooh, yeah. You guys want to detour to this? We gotta take it with a grain of salt. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so it's making me open in the app because of the. It's 
Sorry, guys, just give me one second. I'll play this while I do it. The flat tire. That could be, yeah. you know, I've had, I had parrots around my house when I was younger. Uh, my ex-wife had a pet shop and all that kind of stuff. So I'm accustomed to them and they're repetitious in what they do. So you get to the point where you can predict what they're going to do. That's my best guess is it's a parrot in the background and that's what's happening. So let's talk for a minute about grief because a lot of people are going to say grief. Scott, I posted over in the chat a picture of her face in a still at 39 seconds. If that's not terror, I don't know what is. And it is not what I expect in this situation. I know people are going to say grief does weird things. Grief does do weird things. It slows your cadence typically. And the reason it slows your cadence is because your brain is running on two channels. It's running on trying to answer the question you're dealing with and thinking about what's going on. On occasion, grief will drive you to speed. It will drive you to agitated. When it does, it's for one reason. It's help, help, help. It's not protection of self. I see agitation and single focus at protection and answering the right question. That ain't healthy. That ain't good. Okay, so I finally got it to come up. Um, this is the testimony. Depression, no excuse, but maybe a reason she comes off strange and may not have realized this was happening. Who knows? Okay. All right. I, I can see what you're saying there. Um, I just have a hard time offering her any sort of grace when it comes to it, to be honest. You know, that's what I was trying to do the whole time. I should have just asked you to do it for me, Jones, and thank you. I finally got it. <laughs> I was hurrying up and trying to put my phone in, like, airplane mode to stop the thing from popping up. Mother's eyes looks, she looks, she's, there's, she's weird. The mother's weird. I'm sorry. I, I can't get over it. Um. Not one single tear, not one single sense of urgency. At no point does she say, like, hell, they had to get her to say Maddie's name. She wouldn't even say Maddie's name. I, I, how can't you say her name? Oh, wrong thing. All right. So here is, um, allegedly, this is testimony from Jen, Maddie's mother's ex-friend. And it says, this is from Facebook, a woman who was friends with Jen for a brief period, keeping her identity anonymous, commented the following. When I was friends with Jen back in 2022, she was prescribed a high dose of antipsychotic for a bipolar one, but had mentioned she took it all at once right before bed and would basically knock her out till morning. She complained about having a super hard time waking up in the mornings. I suggested she should take half in the a.m. and half at p.m. or go to the doctor because it sounded like she was way over medicated. But it also could have been that she wasn't taking it as prescribed. Okay. Well, we know every day until this tragedy, until this Monday, that Jennifer did take Maddie to school. She's claiming it's the first time she did not take Maddie to school. But I personally know that Jen felt that she was more creative when she was manic and actually enjoyed how it felt. One time she texted me and said that her and I should not take our meds for a week and create art and music. And I literally replied, ha ha, nope. I'd like to see that text. What I will say is um, throughout history, a lot of artists have claimed to be bipolar and have felt similar. Yes, I'd be outside the community screaming. I would not be within my home. I met her on Bumble BFF when I was living in Orlando. We're no longer friends because Stefan had taken himself off his psych meds and had threatened to unalive himself in front of Jen. She didn't think it was a big deal, but I told her I would not be going to her house until Stefan got help because I knew he was always armed. That made her upset at me and ultimately ended our friendship. You guys believe in this so far? It's hard for me to say whether Jen is guilty. She seemed to love Maddie, but I also know she ignored major red flags when it came to Stefan, which she proved to me when she thought it was no big deal that he threatened to pew-pew himself in front of her. 
So part of me wonders if she just wouldn't let herself accept that he was hurt in Maddie, if Maddie did indeed tell her he was doing it. I did find it weird that none of nobody, none of her ex-friends, none of her, uh, you know, nobody's coming forth. We hear all these people that supposedly knew Stefan coming forth. Where's everybody that knew Jennifer? All she said was that they had gotten in an argument. She never mentioned what the argument was about. But her unbothered reaction to him saying that made me feel like him saying stuff like that was a regular occurrence. Stearns was armed. We saw his Reddit posts about weapons collecting and forum posts. Manipulative suicide threats. A something utilized by nearly all emotional abusers. A tactic utilized by nearly all emotional abusers. I wonder what triggered him to make these threats. What are you guys thinking? P. Lola's mom, she was not deceased in the photos. You think nearly all of them are trolls? Because that's childish. Agree. She didn't communicate with anyone after the party. I, I want to know what happened that night. That's where our answers are. From after the party till that morning. You think so, Ellie? Interesting. Very interesting. Now, granted, right, that is a Reddit forum. We don't know if it's factual, take it with a grain of salt, but it is interesting to say the least. And abusers usually do use those type of uh, tactics, if you will. An emotional abuser. It is very interesting. Uh, we do know that they had a rocky relationship, right? Many people have came forward and said over the seven years they were together, they they were on again, off again. Uh, it was also stated he was sleeping in a separate guest room. It was also stated that when they would break up, he would talk about Maddie most. She did, Kathy. So here, I don't, maybe you guys didn't see this. I'll get back to the behavioral panelist, but this was interesting. Um, let me rewind this back. Is it this one? One second. I'm sorry. Um, uh, do, do, do. Okay, here we go. I found this one very interesting. Now, people are saying Dis Disney's trying to distance themselves from Stefan. So you two are here today. I think Disney's being honest because he did no longer work with them. So, you know, I don't think they're lying and saying, no, Stefan doesn't work for us. They didn't say he's never worked for us. They just said he doesn't work for us. And he didn't at that time. I heard that she worked from home. She was doing like marketing and stuff. Yeah. So apparently she was like a vacation planner. Now, Buster Mayo, I heard opposite. I heard that she was one woman that he dated with, with a child, that she he didn't date single moms. Oh, that's definitely him. Oh, don't it just give you the chills when you know what you know and you see this? At the mass, we saw how even their teachers prayed to God for the rest of their soul. Some of her friends, with permission from their parents, shared on camera how they feel now that their friend Maddie, as they call her, has left this plane. So, um, again, this is translated. Uh, so it will sound a little differently. Now, what bothers me, our whip, is if the mom overslept, Maddie didn't have school till 9.30 a.m. 9 30 a.m if at 8 a.m mom is claiming she saw maddie get dressed i asked this the last time we spoke about maddie who called stefan to say maddie needed a ride now mom is claiming she overslept but yet she saw 
She saw Maddie getting dressed at a.m. We know that's a lie. We know that without a doubt. But how are you claiming you overslept if school's not till 930? You have an hour and a half. If your ass is awake at 8 a.m., you're not late. You didn't oversleep. You have an hour and a half to get her to school. I think the mother is lying about everything that day. Found at school event. Everyone at she school is sad. To... Monday and Tuesday, the teachers were crying. I have a teacher who couldn't even speak, and she even knew Maddie and her family. Her best friend describes her as a happy girl. She... So here comes Maddie's best friend. This young boy, very bravely, comes forward. And here comes what he has to say about it. Had a smile on her face all day, shining like a star. At some point, she tastes shining like a star. What a beautiful way to speak. Smile on her face all day, smiling like a star. See, the guy that's an email and she told him something felt wrong at her home that she had encountered in some problems. 2022. So it just said right there that she told him that there have been some problems at home, that she encountered a problem. She said her stepfather was very mean to her. And but when I saw that message, I thought it was like uh, something normal, like they fought because, um, you know, something normal. Just so in 2002, she said her stepfather was very mean to her. But when he saw the message, he thought it was something normal. Obviously, I'm repeating what they're saying. I don't think you need me to do that. So I'll just shut up. But I find that interesting. Found it pretty normal, like just arguing, just pair of fighting. So Maddie did share with somebody. She did. The year when, according to the authorities, Stephen Stearns would have abused a child under 12 years of age. The reaction. This interview was originally done in Spanish, Mello. So there is a, a, a it's English translation. authorities stephen stearns would have abused a child under 12 years of age the reaction of the parents was immediate to the community take care of the children not just your own always watch over the children outside <laughs> ensure no one approaches them to pet them to touch them and teach Aww. the children from an early age from two three four years old they say things that are happening to them and one should believe them because there are parents who do not believe Oof. them disney world communications may have stated that stefan stearns does not work for the company but sleuths are uncovering stern well no because again he didn't work at the time of the crime it's that simple but so we we hear right there that the friend speaks out and says he knew this, this the Maddie's best, best friend. friend, Joseph Andrade, spoke of how despite any problems the young girl had been experiencing, she still smiled. She had a smile on her face all day, shining like a star, Joseph said. However, when asked about the specific kind of problems encountered at home, Maddie's best friend said that in 2022, she said her stepfather was very mean to her. Notably, 2022 was the year that Stearns allegedly Look at that baby girl. Oh, it makes me so angry. Look at her face. I, I still, I can't get over it. How the hell did you oversleep if school wasn't till 930? Mom's a liar. Oh, you think so, Teresa? Interesting. Lee committed unspeakable acts against a child. According to the arrest warrant in the circuit court of the Ninth Judicial Circuit of Osceola County, Florida, in the case of the state of Florida versus Stefan Michael Stearns, defendant, the Kissimmee Police Department. Uh, they're so innocent. They're so innocent. Look at these photos and these smiles, knowing what we know, knowing what you know alleged that on or between the dates of 03-2022 to 12-03-2023, Stearns did violate a child. Matt so, all right. So here's another thing. So I've received a comment. If you guys don't mind, just I'll, I'll put the behavioral panelists up while I run, use the restroom really quick. But I did receive a comment and the, the commenter uh, is friends by the sounds of it with, with Maddie's father. I didn't pry. I, I just asked simple questions. I'm not looking, you know, I'm not going to message and, and ask 
weird questions and all that, but I asked what I could in a respectful way. So during uh, the last time I spoke about Maddie, I made a comment about Maddie's mom being the only biological mother that could go to the party. I, I, I meant that in the way of she was the only biological parent in the state, the only one that could have gone to the party. I was not dismissing the father from being in Maddie's life, but the way I said it made this person who was friendly with them comment and uh, state as much. And from what the commenter said, Maddie's mother withheld Maddie from her father and his father's wife. Oh, may I chatter. It doesn't make sense, Liz. It does, Scottish. So Maddie's father, uh, and as you can tell, because photos were uploaded from the dad's family and, and his wife, and, you know, they very much love Maddie. This woman now thinks, and I'm sure that the father's family thinks that Jennifer did that because it was only a matter of time before Maddie would speak before Maddie would tell the father's family what was going on. And they're probably right. Um, again, I didn't pride much more than that. I just said, are you saying, you know, she withheld and they said, yes, we are. That's what I'm saying. She kept Maddie from the father. They loved, they loved Maddie. They wanted Maddie. She just spent time with the father's house that, you know, but for the most part, she was withheld. Did you see that all Audrey's, uh, Families coming forth now saying they checked the registry. And because Stephen was not on the registry, the, the state failed, Audrey. What do you guys think of that? Or should we just hold another discussion on that? Let me not, let me, we'll just do another topic. Mom hiding bothers me big time. I would like to have been a fly on the wall when the PD told her she was gone. That reaction be fairy telling. I agree. He hasn't been charged for murder yet. It's because mom re drum her. I, yeah. I am a little bit, Amy, but I think that's because they're they're looking and they want all their ducks lined up. Now we know, Kendra, because the mom uh, put a fraction between their relationship. Parental alienation. Yes, it happens. You think it's BS, Claire? Oh, that Audrey's family's doing that? Yeah. I do, Scottish Deborah. Unfortunately, I do think that. And I think the night of Maddie's birthday, he may have given too much. Of course, that's just my speculation. I have no idea. Uh, I am interested to see if we do end up getting autopsies. I don't know. Here's the greater Grammy's great. She's great. She's great. She, the cheese jokes chowder. <laughs> so, well, thank you for that. Zero accountability, Jameson. Mm -hmm. I don't think they even checked the registry. Oh, and that's the other thing. So that's also where Maddie's friend came forth that said Maddie has a fear. She doesn't like sleeping alone. Well, no shit. She wasn't even safe sleeping in her own bed. The monster was in her room. The monster was in her house. Ah. Oh. I don't believe it. I didn't believe a word they said. Me neither. Hey, Spudler. I'm going to put this on, uh, run to the restroom. I do apologize. You guys tell me what you think. They're still going over mom right now. Then we'll forward it a little bit to Stefan. But I feel like we all know Stefan's guilty. Same here. Same here. Uh, but I think mom is. Absolutely, Joe Madre. But that's in Audrey's case. And I don't think in Audrey's case, there it was a previous thing. You're right, Jennifer. You're right. What a horrifically sad thing to have to even think. I don't think she was afraid of Stefan. Have you ever seen somebody that's afraid of somebody that's all over them with the comforting? The way she's rubbing on them and tapping on them. And he didn't do that for her. Why not? So do I, Morticia. They're fantastic. Missing. Everything she answers is very specific to that. I'm not going to go into a whole lot other than that, other than to say there are a handful of things missing. 
the mucous membranes involvement is missing. She's not cried. She isn't crying. There's no inflamed nostrils. There's none of that that you would associate with this. There's that look of terror, that look of when one of the questions is asked. And then if you want to pay attention to her eyes, I want you to start paying attention now because we always talk about eye movement meaning something. When I ask you to recall something, you go to a place, whether it's visual recall or other, this is kind of dirty and doesn't have enough clarity to be able to say it's visual or what, but she's got starting to establish a place she's going for information. I would poke on that a lot. I poke on it a whole lot. When she says, there's a lot of shifting of pronouns here, Mark, I agree with you. And she said, we had dropped her off close to the school now, we always talk about requests for approval being forehead up, and that could mean, hey, do you get me? Are you tracking? In this case, it very clearly is, do you believe me? Because her voice lilts up at the very end and her forehead's up. This is going to be an interesting one. From here, she's got a lot of cleanup for me if she if I'm going to believe anything she's saying. Chase. I'm with Greg. If I'm going to believe anything she's saying. So um, I received a message, and... I don't know. I don't know if this is uh, if there was a reason this person said this or what, but I heard I heard there's a creator that reached out to Maddie's mother and and asked the uh, her price in for pet sitting. Does anybody know about that? Does any is that the Maddie's mom? pet sit was she a pet sitter too on the side or something or what is that about anybody know i think maybe mom and maddie's arguing in the morning which might explain why mom wasn't at birthday party and the argument continued when maddie got home so you think it was the morning of sunday the birthday party she came home from the party they started fighting some more Yes, she has a website. Thank you. Me neither, SoFlo Mama. Me neither. I can't believe mine's about to turn 18. I remember her 13th birthday party like it was yesterday. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ella. Ellie, sorry. Oh, Bert, you don't think so? Let me see. Mom may have bit, has sneaking suspicions, but pushed them away. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, apparently you can see them in a background of one of the photos. I'll see if I can pull it up. She's not afraid of the monster. Even if true, your sweet daughter comes first. Get over it. Right. And, and here's the thing. You have all these news reporters. You have the police around you. What better time to lose that fear than knowing your daughter's missing and the police are involved? Hello? Help me. Help us. I, I just, I, I can't get behind that. She's afraid. She's afraid. They would have arrested them on the spot. Then what is her fear? Do you know what I mean? What? Afraid. I'm tired of people giving these women excuses of being afraid. If you're afraid, what do you think your children are? You're their protector. A, a flaming ball of fire could be coming near me. And if my children were in that line of fire, there would be no fear to be had. I'm protecting them. I can't with that shit. So what do you got? The day hey, video Astra. is sponsored by Aura. That's so nice that Aura sponsored them for today. Love that for them. Aura.com. Go check it out if you're interested. I do as well. I, I'm tired of it, Dean. I'm tired of it. I'm afraid. They're afraid. They're, you know, okay. Do, do they look like battered women? Do they look like they're fearful? You know what I see? I see monsters. I see selfish people that weren't, and I'm not dismissing. There are times where it is so bad that you are fearful. I shared with you all during one of my streams about the 16-year-old that horrifically survived the night mom's boyfriend broke in and took the life of her mother and her brother there are times where the fear is that strong i'm not taking that away by any means i promise you i'm not and this these cases i don't see it i won't accept it as grubby said as i said 
what better time to lose that fear than your child missing the police being in your living room? Yeah, I was scared. She was so scared. She wanted one more night with him, Blondie Locks. Just one more. I'll tell you everything I, you want. Just let me have one more night of relations with him. So scared. OG Fish. My girls will be 21. I've been doing this mom thing alone for the last six years. I've yet to bring. Yeah, I've been a single mom for many years myself. And I, yes, I'm with you. I have plenty of years. Hopefully. I don't know. I may not. But, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? My children are going to come first. And, it, and it's not just the threat of physical. We can get past that. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I do appreciate that, though. Um, but the emotional connection kids get, you know, there's just there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. It's hard enough, though. It's hard enough. Single parents, especially single mothers, they get judged very often for dating. I feel like as mothers, we should be allowed to date. We should be allowed to socialize, do all those things. But let's keep it, you know, let's let's keep our children in our forefront, man. She was stigmatized. All she could see was Stefan. They wasn't even together and she was scared of losing them. That might be more like it. She might have been afraid. Oh, thank you, Asher, for space. She might be afraid of losing him. Oh, I'm so sorry, Spudler. You're like the third person to say that. I don't think so either, Pointer Lover. Good to see you. Pick a lot. Liquor. Pick her. Pickle, liquor, and pointer lover. You guys got me tongue-tied. That's what I'm saying. Where's everybody to come out on Jennifer's behalf? Pickle. Mom's pet service was called Sailor Pet Care. Same as what she changed her Facebook to, and then she deleted it. Oh, screw you and your Facebook. And I get it. People are like, but Granny, she, she's, you know, please, she's mourning, and she might be a victim, and yeah. Yeah, but right now, the only victim I see as Maddie. So we got Sailor Pet Care. Check it out. Doesn't even come up. All right. Well, let me take care of your pet, but I couldn't protect my daughter. All right, I'm sorry. I'm being a little mean. Let me just stop. Let me just. Most, all right. Without any exception, it lowers your priority of do I need to manage my how I'm being perceived by other people? It puts that way down on the priority list. And we're still seeing a lot of perception management here. And we're seeing social behavior, which might suggest that that we might not be dealing with any neurotypes. We're seeing her seeing her socialize this interruption by the parrot or whatever it is. And shaking is pretty common and normal to burn off excess energy and adrenaline. We see that in a lot of people. So that's true, right? Shaking is a way to build off energy, you know, whatever. If you have anxiety, if you have ADHD, all the things. I get that. But mom's cadence contradicts her body movement. Because she's very, like, slow. There's no urgency. It's just very, you know? I was wondering the minute I heard about Santa, I immediately thought it was connected. Santa what? Santa Claus? What about Santa? Or what, what am I missing? Why do you say that, M Note? That is the first I read that. Where are you getting that from? Oh, where are you getting that from? I had somebody sign me up for that one time being a creep. on YouTube. Creep on YouTube. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything about that. I don't know where you're getting that from. She probably did ask her some space. She was probably groomed. There was a pedo bus close to where she was found. Yeah. The guy that got arrested near him was dressed as Santa. 25 months. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I, well, I don't know about all that in 5, 6, 7, 8, but I'm certainly a mother with a passion. Thank you. Santa was worse than Stefan and his house is blue, too. Oh, selling videos. Well, you know, there's a lot of discussion on the Stefan sell videos and the photos. Probably these sickos usually work in a circle like that. 
Is that how he rarely had a job but always had money? I, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, he looks like Santa. He was arrested. Stefan's phone got him arrested. Wow, Jennifer. Anybody know more about this? I would like to come up and talk about it. This is the first I'm hearing of it. You don't have to be a mother to comment that, Swedler. No, no, you don't. Please do, Jennifer. That is interesting. Hey, Lindsay. My voice is shaky, too. He took his own life. I bet Stefan's phone got him arrested, too. Huh. His son ended his life before the cops got to him. Oh, one month, we're going to have a total solar eclipse. How cool is that? Grandma said that mom said for Stefan to bring Maddie to her because she was too sleepy. That's what I'm saying. It makes no sense, Southern Gale. And I don't know if that's the translation, if that's because they were speaking, you know, they weren't speaking English. If there's some, you know, who was too sleepy? Was Maddie too sleepy? Was mom too sleepy? Did, did mom, mom's claiming she overslept, but she was awake at 8 a.m. School didn't start till 930. None of it makes sense. I can't stand it. None of it makes sense. Hey, Mander. Santa guy was arrested the next day and lived 10 minutes from Soto. All wonder if there is a connection. I saw Grady, I think, give statement. I bet you there is a connection. I wouldn't be surprised if an entire ring goes down and Jennifer Soto's in it. She sure did, Darcy, and that's what they pointed out here. People, when you see it uh, during somebody spelling their own name, uh, you can assume... Uh, that it's maybe the baseline. And yeah. when we say baseline, it's the behavior in this situation with that person. Uh, like Greg always says, not uh, when you're sitting on the couch eating Cheetos, flaming hot Cheetos, <laughs> either way. So she's kind of launching into a narrative and a story about what happened. And that's what the I'm focus thinking. of her answer is on the timeline and the details. She's having a lot of trouble making eye contact one thing that we're definitely seeing here yep. is the eyelids very rarely close completely. Yeah, mom's not even blinking. She, she's like a fucking robot. Uh, and, uh, and what's your daughter's name? Maddie. Okay, thank you. Say it. Say her name. I've never seen a, a case where a missing child and the parents don't even say her name. Yes, like they're mimicking what they think the people want to see. Right, Megan? I'm with you. To me, Megan says, to me, their interviews seem like they think they're doing the right steps if a child went missing. All they're doing is repeating a story opposed to what you say when really looking for someone. Couldn't agree more. And the mother as in little tidbits, right? Little unnecessary tidbits. Oh, and she forgot her phone that morning. That was me. I'd be like, oh my God, she forgot her phone that morning. Well, what are the chances? The morning my daughter goes missing, she forgets her phone. Mom says it like it's fact. Like, and then she puts Maddie down for why she forgot the phone. Well, she's ADHD and she's forgetful. Oh, here's a red flag, madam. Wave it around for us. And this is an instant. I don't trust that woman. And I don't like anything that has to do with this woman. From an accident, he happened to him when he was younger. So there, we did go over some of that. If that's the um, the the money that was put aside during the, his whole custody thing, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't mention, you know. And there's footage over at a church, but they can't see faces. I'm telling you, the mom knew. You would never catch me saying my child was seen on a camera, but they can't tell if it's my child or not. If you can't tell if it's her, then it's not her. Get out there and look some more. Thank you, legal extraction. So I did. I asked earlier. First time here, you mentioned Alexa earlier. Alexa recordings have been admitted in criminal cases. The judge can order Amazon's release in the case of Alexa if prosecution requests. Thank you. Thank you. 
I wonder if we'll hear anything. If they had an, uh, not electronic, an automatic dog feeder, right? Then they're up to times with electronics and all that. What are the chances they did not have an Alexa? I'm thinking they likely did. Is the Alexa going to give us anything? Could it give us anything? Oh, I agree with that, Spudler. I don't think it should be taken in isolation either. I'm just saying, I think the mother, as a normal person who's not a behavioral analyst, I picked up on all these red flags. These gentlemen pick up on all these red flags. And now the police are without a doubt telling us there's too many inconsistencies in the timeline. The pieces aren't fitting. Instinctive behavior. I want to keep something that's potentially threatening to me in my view. So I'm not going to close them all the way. So this is a partial closure of eyelids. And no emotions really visible here until there's the smile that, that we just talked about. It's a smile of self-management, self-perception. And maybe she's thinking the news is going to cut this part out. She goes right back to a sad demeanor after that smile again. And there's no mention of the daughter's name here. Which no mention of the daughter's name. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Had to clear my throat. You're welcome. It's a gray area because they don't know the extent it truly records either. And the tech keeps advancing in new models. Plus, our phones do pick up more than we think. Wow. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate your input and welcome. So this is interesting. So that's a good point. Our phones. Have phones? I don't know. You know, we often joke like, oh, our phones are listening to us. I was talking about toilet paper. And now all of a sudden I'm getting all these ads for toilet paper. <clears throat> well, our phones are listening to us. There is a microphone setting. Um, they absolutely are gathering information on us all the time. We truly live in a world where Big Brother is all around us, which is why I found it very suspicious that Stefan mentioned no cameras. No cameras. And then we all know about the, the flat tire, right? Some people are thinking Stefan uh, faked having a flat tire. And some people think he really had a flat tire. And that's the only reason he put Maddie where he put her. Because he was worried somebody would pull over to help. What do you guys think? Where'd that go? I don't doubt one bit that Stefan has rolled, rolled over mom. And they are just working to verify whatever he's told them. Was the mom shaking or just moving her legs to make it look like shaking? She seemed to just be, quite frankly, on the, the urge of convulsing. She was just shaking dramatically. Lots of shaking. Oh, Jenna. Hey, Brandy. Yes, yeah, she did say she went through Maddie's phone. And then the mom came out and said, oh, people mis misunderstood. That was taken out of context. That whole Maddie wanted to live in the woods. That, that was only if there was like, you know, a state of emergency. It looks fake because his car GPS was showing stopped. But have we received any information stating that it did not show he stopped? Right. And that is how Maddie was found. Because somebody did see him and they called it in. The police went there and then they found her. Exactly, B. Hey, Trina. That's true, Kathy. So my phone is Bay. <laughs> Which is very unusual uh, for innocent people. This is what bothers me. Great. Good so the first question is if I can have your first and your last name and spell them both down for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto, J E N N. I-F-E-R-S-O-T-O. Mother. Mother. Jennifer, tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. Do you guys see that immediate tone change? 
Look how drastically the tone changes. Yes, I am loving your comments. Thank you. Phone extractions can be redone later as tech progresses, much like DNA. So the same phone may yield new info if the extraction is redone a year or two later. Why they keep phones. Example, the Wells. Wow. Huh. Especially if you keep updating to the same cloud, right? Very interesting. I did not realize that new information come up that much time later. On a live last night, it was said that Madeline's phone, they found where she said the abuse was happening and she was going to run away when she was 13. Hmm. A person had called in a tip that she had seen him on the side of the road where Maddie was found, and they said that that was not the information they were looking for. So thank goodness the police took her serious. They did the same thing with escaped convict Danilo Cavacante. When his, uh, the, his co-worker, his ex-co-worker, called in and said, listen, Danilo was just here at my house. Here he is on the camera. They said, no, 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 that couldn't be him. And it was him. Uh, a cloud, uh, your backup storage. Like I saved my phone, um, all my, my Google information. So what, like recently I just got a new phone and I just transfer my cloud to that phone. So I have all my old photos, all my contacts, my messages, everything is backed up. Electronic data. Thank you. The info is there. The tech extraction device just need to be able to locate it. Thank DNA testing how it's progressed. They just solved a crime in my area because of DNA. Two. One was the uh, the little boy in the box. Yeah, so listen to how it changes here. Listen to this. Jurassic change. Mother. Mother. F for me. Okay. Jennifer Soto. J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-S-O-T-O. Mother. Mother. Jennifer, tell me how you feel right now. I feel like I can't breathe. All I keep thinking about is where is she? Is she safe? Is she okay? That is such a drastic, uh, you know, it's like, okay, spell it out my name. I can be normal. But here, here, I have to be a little more dramatic. You know, here I have to put on the speak my tone down and yes, yes, Jones. And if anybody likes to come up, you're welcome to come up and, and have a discussion here today. I'm going to check my email, Jennifer. Ooh. St. Cloud child pro suspect kills himself as law enforcement closes in. But is that okay? I'll go back to that one. But where does it say this came in because of Stefan's phone? Henry Cox died of self-inflicted gunshot wound, medical examiner says. One of two men being investigated in St. Cloud and accusations involving their alleged production handling child P. Sean killed himself before a federal arrest warrant could be served Tuesday morning. Henry and his father. Henry and his father. Oh. Wow. Being uploaded, uh, St. Cloud Police received a tip in November about child P being uploaded to the internet from an IP address associated with James Cox. They got the warrant on January 19th. And James Cox was arrested on Tuesday while the lack of arrest for Henry Cox was yet unexplained. Uh, he admitted to uploading pictures to search engines to find similar images. Henry Cox, who angels believed, was producing the images while his father uploaded them. Ta oh, father. And oh, my goodness. Sick, sick, sick. Welcome, Tickety. Thank you so much. Oh, this is horrific. I don't know how this is tied to Stefan, but... 
They learned of the blue house that Stefan may have lived in. Okay, let me check this one. Oh, it was neighborhood kids. Guess what? Guess what? Guess how that investigation started? With a cyber tip. Who remembers a conversation we held the other day where somebody came forward and said him and his buddy were aware that Stefan had child CP. Well, obviously child P. And we said, but you didn't call it in? Oh, no, there was a monetary payout to be quiet, right? Somebody comment in my comment section that there'd be no point to call because it's only secondhand information. You yeah, know, there's always a point to call. That is what investigations are for. If it wasn't for somebody calling, they would have never found that. So here's how close these houses were to Stefan, the child CP, 23 minutes away. We're going to uncover an entire ring. I actually thought that prior to hearing all this. This is interesting. Yes, if you see something, say something. See something, say something. Welcome back, Brandy. Polygraphs are tough. I wouldn't recommend it. Even too innocent. It's too risky for many reasons. Independent polygraph only. Hmm. Very interesting. Maybe it is. Maybe that's what's holding us up here. But we're we're all a wreck. My entire family is a mess. We're just so worried. When did you first realize, or when did you file a missing report? We filed a missing report. Uh, we called the police at like four forty-five uh, yesterday, uh, four forty-five p.m. But she actually went missing early that morning around between 8.45 and 9 o'clock in the morning, she went missing. Um, we had dropped her off close to the school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. That smug smile. Oh, I can't with it. I can't stand it. They are weird. We dropped her off at school, close to school. You see how she had to take that deep breath? Get back on topic. It was almost like, all right, let me remind myself. I'm here to sell a story. You know what I mean? Look at it. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Right there. That that is that is such a Stefan did the same thing. Stick to the story. I'm supposed to be grieving. I'm supposed to be sad. You hear that thing go off every day, right? What the hell made you smile now? Some people say she was embarrassed. Embarrassed? Over a, a noise, a, a feeder. You know what? You're not the first to have said that. And, and I agree. I think it has been stated uh, by people that claim to have known Stefan, that she had mental illnesses. I don't know if it's ever been confirmed. Good morning, Mr. Nobody. She does seem to be under uh, the influence to me. 
Did mom walk in? Is the father abusing? She come angry? It's okay. I don't know. I don't know, Anna D. I don't know. The shaking stopped too. It was almost like she was like thankful to have a break, a pause, a relief, you know? I mean, look at that's such a big cup. Sorry about that. Mm. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, Ooh, Kate. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You hear whatever you feel comfortable. Okay, so that right there, right? And I'm sorry, I keep pausing. You probably want to hear more from them, not me. But that right there, she wanted to walk the rest of the way to the school. So we're supposed to believe that Maddie slept the entire way to school and then suddenly popped up wide awake, happy and cheerful, and said, you know what? I'll walk the rest of the way. I'll walk the rest of the way. No, she slept the entire ride and suddenly was like, yeah, let, let me out. I'll walk. And, and yeah, why can't, what do you mean? You don't know what you can share. It's not an investigation. Your child's missing. But she knew. She already knew. I don't know what storyline I'm supposed to give next. I don't want to let on that we're guilty. That's what I'm hearing. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. You hear whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation is, but whatever you feel comfortable sharing that we'll put the awareness out there. Now back to shaking and another deep breath. Again, this is nothing more than a missing child right now. Share her name, her height, her share everything you know about her. You know what, Lindsay? I a lot of people have said that, but to me, I can't get on board because I saw the way she rubbed all over the skis ball, the way she was comfort in him. Green top, black shorts, white crocs was found in jeans. Right, Teresa. And who put her in the jeans? Hey, Akab. Hey, Solo. Then no streets, but dropped her off away from school. That's true. Remember, she made she made her 13-year-old daughter appear as if she wouldn't even know her own address. Lived there all these years, wouldn't know her own address. Right, allowed to share. We're talking about a missing child right now. This isn't a case. Oh, I can't with it. Did you hear about the, the, the there was a father whose daughter was having a sleepover and he was making all the kids mango uh, smoothies? And one of the girls, I believe they were 12 and 13, had a bad feeling. So she didn't drink it. And sure enough, he was drugging the girls and taking advantage of them. Oh, <gasps> show did. Cracking. And before that, you were the lovely Helen Wheels. Thank you so much for 14 months. Was not to share. Give me her height, her description. What is she like? Who were her friends? Where could she be? I don't know what I can share. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like this mother. I'm sorry if some of you do. I don't. That's what I think, the Asher from space, and I don't like it. M taught the bird to mimic her. Speller, there's there's a debate if it's a bird or an automatic feeder. I don't know which. To be honest, I the more I hear it, the more I hear a feeder. Come get your food. And I kind of hear the food drop in. But I don't know. That's that's fact, Kate, right? <laughs> that is fact. Yeah, she was uh spotted walking uh by the church by the middle school uh, on the cameras they saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave they even the way she says this right and i'm sorry to keep pausing but i just keep getting more and more angry she was spotted the way she's speaking instead of saying the last time she was seen was on this footage by the church and, and then look like she walked to the left, but we're not sure because they can't even tell if it's her face, but I hope it's her. I, I just, I hope it's her because it gives me some sign that she's, you know, but we, 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 
and, and this uncertainty. This, this she doesn't even believe herself at this point. See a vehicle or anything else? They just saw her walk away uh, around 9 a.m. heading towards the school, but she never made it. Um, Thank you so much for that. You know what? This right here, but she never made it. Um, hey, Miss L, if you guys haven't, could you please consider hitting the thumbs up? Uh, it helps with the algorithm. It helps get Maddie's story out there further. And I'd really appreciate it. So listen right here. Listen again. This is your, listen, put yourselves, even a child in your life you love. If you don't have your own child, a child you love is missing. Okay. Is this how you would say it? But she never made it. Um, yeah. What is the school? But she never made it. Um, Sucks in lips. Yeah. I'd be a frantic mess. And listen, I know people will say, but you can't say what you would or wouldn't do. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Because I lost my child on the beach one time. Yep, that quickly, they walk away. You think they're with their older cousins, the older cousins come back and you're like, where the hell is so-and-so? And next thing you know, you know, you're, you're on a beach. Where's your child? So I can say how I'd respond. No, granted, not on this gratitude. And thankfully mine was found. But I've never seen a mother be so calm to the point where she has to be on some type of Xanax or something. That's the only excuse I'm given. Is this woman has to be on something that is keeping her chilled. But what is with sucking the lips? And I hope the panel right here tells us because they are the professionals. Well said. Have you given any contact with the school? Yes. Um, that they're doing everything they can. They've given me all their resources. The principals called me. They've looked at their cameras. Cameras. Um, I don't think they've caught anything. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy. So they can't see specific faces. Okay, even that right there. If I knew I was going to have an interview because my child's missing, I'm holding her photo. Don't ask me anything about a timeline. This is an interrogation. Here's my daughter. This is what she looks like. This is how tall she is. This is what she was wearing. If you see her do this, if you seen her call me, if you know anything, she is taking this like an interrogation. You know why? Because she studied it with Stefan. Because they knew it would turn into investigation and she is practicing what they sat down to discuss. That is my opinion on it. Have you ever seen an uh, interview of a missing parent that was presented like it was an interrogation timeline? I haven't. And she was seeing, it was great and they couldn't see faces. Then it's not my child. Get out there. I'm at the church now. Right. She brings up it was grainy and that they couldn't see his face. But why are you believing it was her then, Jennifer? Because you wanted it to be, be her. And I think, I think the police said that to put their guard down. Oh, yes, yeah, Stefan, you're right. You dropped her off at the church. We see her on this footage. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huge sigh of relief, right? Yeah. We saw you drop her off. We see her right here. It's weird. I would have already tagged him, but he actually seems sadder than her. Yes. Yes, he does. A little too sad, but, you know. Cameras. Um, I don't think they've caught anything. The cameras is too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, Unnecessary details. I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not to at all. just not show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. Um, yep. She, from time to time, she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally, and that's actually what happened yesterday. She left her phone at home. Look at her squint in her eyes, and now she's closing them, right? The day you just accidentally oversleep, the day your daughter accidentally goes missing, is the day she accidentally left her phone? She's not even repeating it in a format of like, holy shit. The day my daughter disappeared, she accidentally left her phone. Help me. This is abnormal. None of this is like her. Please. If you've seen her, here's what she looks like. Here's her photo. 
She's so nonchalant that it infuriates me. I am getting seriously angry. I need to calm it down. I am sorry for that. But this is pissing me off. She went to school. Um, but that happens from time to time. She's got ADHD uh, for memory. <laughs> She's very forgetful. Um, so, yeah, there's no way to track her right now because I have, well, the detective does not have her phone. Because um, she's very forgetful. That's like so negative. I mean, in a time like this is an unnecessary thing to add on ADHD. And then we find out later she was never even officially diagnosed with ADHD. They were trying to get her to be. Why? Because we hear Stefan had a, a pill addiction to just what happens to be ADHD medication. Hmm. Interesting. Jenna K. Granny, my eight-year-old son got on the wrong bus after school and he ended up cross town. And I literally ran over there. That happened to my son in kindergarten. They didn't get him off on his stop. He ended up going and going and going. I had to call down to bus stations and it was a whole mess. It was sad and he never took the bus again. My parents who do see the interviews early on, most who are holding foot. Yes. The McCanlin family, they held that teddy bear. She didn't think to bring it to school in the morning, so Maddie has it. I would. Yeah, really. Absolutely, Kate. Great idea. It's all really convenient. I'm glad I'm not alone in this because this is just infuriating. Oh, yeah, she's, she's forgetful. Very forgetful. Uh, but this isn't normal behavior now. I, I had a buddy. Gary Pachosa, Greg, you've met Gary, and he had a bird, had a, a one of those gray, what are they called? The gray, African gray, yeah, yeah, African African gray. Yeah. and this thing would call his dog, it would whistle for him, and then when he was, it would imitate, it was, but it was, it was going to go ahead. Yeah, the, the bird was a ramp, as opposed to, I ask you a question about what happened, what do you expect a person to do, that you expect them to go right into the story, she doesn't, she does a deep breath, she eye blocks, and she didn't go into what happened. This is body language of preparation. Preparation to ensure I deliver the story. She's there's also sorrow and concern when she's talking about not sure what the she's allowed to talk about. And she does a left eye accessing again, that thing we saw where her eyes are going up in her head and to the left. Okay, let's keep an eye and see is that where she goes to create or where she goes for memory? Because we get a really damn good example of where she goes for memory a little bit later. And I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be different. So it's really interesting to watch. That bounce is going pretty good now, and she's mouth grooming. We always say, as you stress and the inside of your mouth gets drier and drier, we'll groom inside of our mouths to pull away mucus and that kind of thing. And the other thing is the adrenal cycle. When Once you start dumping all these chemicals into your system from fight or flight, your body needs air to burn those, and you can see it ramping up. Her mouth is open. There's really, really a lot of oddity here. She does one shoulder shrug and she does a um, lip compression when she says something about she never made it. This is, look, we always talk about what kind of a person you, how you talk to a person in interview or interrogation. If I were talking to this person in interview or interrogation, you get very soft. You need to be very soft with this person, reach out, touch her, talk to her and say, help us help you. Let me know what, what you know and what you don't know. You get more information doing that than you do by asking really hard questions when someone's missing a kid. There's a couple of times in here, and there's there's a narrow, very narrow band of time in here that she looks very believable and right where she should be. She's got real helplessness. Um, she and she's we're just waiting, and her eyes go down the right. She's got some lip compression, her brow tips go up and sorrow. That's all the right body language. She all, also only uses present tense for agitation. All the right body language, yeah, because she studied how to behave, if you ask me. Oh, if you ask me, thank you so much, Darcy. I, I know. I know. Time traveler. My kids and grandkids never put phone down. It's like an extension of their head. Don't go bathroom without it. Patient has dropped. Those are really much better signs for her than the first video. So I'll leave this video hopeful that I'm going to see a mother who has questions but okay. not involved as we move through this. Right now, this what? Tail end of this video is a lot better than what we saw in video one in the beginning of this one. Chase, what do you got? Right, because this is her second interview and she behaved a little bit better in this one. She gave a little more of what they would look for. Right, Megan Claire. 
Did she try calling her when she wasn't outside school or message her? Or did she know Maddie's phone wasn't with her? Which takes us back to Stefan saying when he dropped her off, she was digging in her school bag for headphones. For headphones? For what? She wouldn't have had her phone. She did, Spudler. She says that. And we know it's not true because, unfortunately, Maddie was already deceased. And if he was asking where she could be, like, did you think she could be at James' house? That was four days after James was arrested. Mm. She's sick. Yes, sick. I freaked out if I can't find my cats in the house. Can you imagine not knowing where my daughter was and acting like that? Right, chicken noodle. Yep. Digging through her headphones. Uh-huh. To use it on what? You liar. Yeah, I agree with you. And we're seeing that shaking maybe let's call it a baseline until the questions are asked again, then she's kind of locked down. And when harder questions are asked, she locks down that, that shaking behavior. Now we're seeing more of an upward tone. And we haven't seen that with any factual questions, like when she, when she called the police or what her name was. Ellie, good then, point. Then uh, Greg was talking about mouth grooming. We're also seeing a lip retraction when the lips go past the barrier of the teeth. This is typically a need for reassurance. And this is happening at the moment that she's saying uh, she never made it. A need for reassurance. You hear that? A need for reassurance. Who would have thought you could find all this out by watching somebody? Clarify the pressy between mom saying she called 911 at 430 and the cops. No, because the cops are just saying, no, you didn't. No, she didn't. She called at 830. There is so much that you have to make a child aware of nowadays. I, and can you imagine, Kathy, even saying that your 13-year-old does not know her address? Does anybody else find that's being insulting? 13, I, I don't think she'd find her way. Uh, the, what? Then what are you doing sitting home? Go look for her. Yup, and then they ended up finding her in the woods. You are not mistaken, honey. You are not mistaken. If I miss Kim and tell any of you because I'd be torn apart, would have to block blame victims, my opinion, peace. Well, hippie porum, I'm sorry you feel that way. I, I, as the police have recently said, there, there are discrepancies in what this mother is saying. They don't think that she's as innocent, and either do a lot of us. Either do a lot of us. It is all strange. What time was she seeing the vehicle on camera? Uh, eight, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. 8.19. Hold on. Let me make sure. Eight nineteen. Eight nineteen. And uh, right at this moment when they're saying, waiting to hear anything else from the school, uh, she's saying that there's a hard single shoulder shrug, prolonged eyebrow raise, kind of seeking approval, or do you believe me? Like uh, Greg said in the first video more lip retraction. And one thing that's happening here is that there's a parent sharing all of the reasons her daughter cannot be found. Yes. Yes. Just like you just said, Ellie, all the reasons she cannot be found. Yes. There's no, she, she just doesn't have any hope, which is sad. It's really sad. And really, this, I think, is highly unusual, and it presents a huge hurdle for me to think that she's wanting to inspire people or help or inspire hope uh, that there's a way that this can be done. Well, and here's my thing, Liz. If you don't think your daughter knows her own address, wouldn't you be even more certain to make sure she always has her phone on her? Right? Like, you, you, don't, you don't think she knows how to get home? You know, she forgot her cell phone. Wouldn't you drop her cell phone off to her? Wouldn't you want to make sure they always had their cell phone? She's not. Stop making excuses. I'm surprised to hear that they already had her funeral. So obviously detectives are holding us all very close to their vest and still compiling all the evidence. I agree. When somebody introduces, introduces complexities yeah, and challenges that. like this, I've never seen someone do it who's purely innocent. Uh, she And she's going through all the lists. She left her phone at home. She's got ADHD. The cameras aren't good enough to see anything. There's no way to track her. And still, we're not seeing a mention of, of Madeline's name at all. And, one and that is such a great point. He just said he's never seen an innocent person do this. And I get it. I said this earlier. 
Same thing Hippie Purim came in and said. They don't like, people don't like the victim blaming. But the police have not ruled her out as a suspect. Matter of fact, they have recently gone as far as to say she is. And they're taking a closer look at her now. I, I, until they rule her a, a victim, until they come out and they say Madison, Madeline's mother is not a suspect. She is going to be dissected like one, just like the behavioral panelists are doing here. Because unfortunately, the red flags are waving in our faces. And I get that. I get that. Uh, that upsets some people. I, I'm sorry. Can't help the way I feel about it, though. Did they crack in? Wow. They One question the reporter up. asks is, uh, is this normal behavior? And this behavior we're seeing here is is not normal at all not in normal. her, in the mother here. Granted, there's some unusual stuff. So we'll take a look at a few more clips after this one here. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so I, I'm the same with you. That that blame that she's putting on Madeline around a ADHD and, and um, forgetfulness. I can't help but realize, and you know what? I'm going to pat myself for it because I'm proud for it. Most of the things they are saying here, is most of the things we said last Saturday. They're blaming the ADHD, the forgetfulness. She doesn't know her address. They are all putting her that, I mean, they are negative things. And such a crucial time. When do you hear a mother speak negatively? Why was ADHD even mentioned? Why are we saying she doesn't know her address? Why are you calling her forgetful? Not like, you know, well, sometimes Maddie's silly in the morning and, and you know, she's just so excited to get to school that she'll leave without her phone. Oh, no, she she has ADHD. She's forgetful. We just spoke about this last Saturday, Julie, and I said the same thing. I made my kids memorize my number and a couple others just in case. We need to teach our kids basic skills for safety. I went through scenarios for certain circumstances, so be in grades. I did a song with my kids when it came to our addresses and our phone numbers. Whatever way you teach them, you just teach them. If you have to write it down and have them write it down, you know, like the practice writing, do it that way. Whatever it takes. But the but a lot of people aren't doing that anymore. A lot of people are fully dependent on electronics. I think it is embarrassing to claim that your 13-year-old doesn't know her address. I'm sorry. I find that to be an insult. And if you've really felt that way, then you'd make sure they always had their phone on them. Is is an odd maneuver in this particular situation. I don't like the look of that. Um, not that I'm against blaming people for stuff. It's just not right for this situation where you're wanting the kid to be found or you should be wanting the kid to be found, just as you say, Chase. You'd want to be eliminating those things and having more possibility I'm mad, of that man, person Chatter. being found, I not am. putting barriers in the way. You're exactly right. Um, again, we have it. We dropped... Putting barriers in the way. Oh, uh, How about when she said the dogs... To, to see if the dogs will snip her out. Oh, there's something about the word she used sniff her out maybe i don't know at this point maybe i'm just nitpicking because i'm annoyed with her but i just i felt like it was such a uh well you're talking about your daughter you're not talking about the set of keys you lost we're talking about your daughter sniff her out oh we're sniffing you out jennifer her off second time we dropped her off okay very clear around that we dropped her off okay good you said it twice now we know now we know you both dropped her off um to your point greg i'm sure yeah she's she's, she's she's breathing and we get those some of these bigger intakes but i'm not getting the rapid breath of something like panic or or concern and she said earlier that the feeling she had was of of, of i can't breathe and yet we've got a breathing. She's not having to catch up with that breathing. It's not, it's not the panic. So, so right. her breathing doesn't match what she's told us is the feeling that she has. Right. Because she thinks that's what they want to hear. She thinks that's a statement to say, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Doing those interviews. I'm glad she, she, yep, honey. Yep. 
because now the police are going back over all of them and saying, yep, something's not adding up here. Right now, which I would suggest you saying, oh, I can't breathe. That That's a sense of, of panic. And I'm not seeing panicked breathing at, at, at this point. So that's of interest to me. So second video in, I'm, po I'm possibly more concerned even than I was uh, in the first place. Scott, what do you think? All right. Um, when he when he brings up the detectives again, that's when her legs start shaking. Or when he, I think it's the first time he brings it up, her legs starts okay. shaking again, and we see her doing that whole bob, bobbing around thing that's happening. And again, this still doesn't sound like a mother who's stressed that her child is missing and could possibly still be alive, and she's worried about what's going on with her. None of that at all. Then more stress mouth. With that question as well, or what I call stress mouth, that's just disappearing lips when your lips disappear literally. And I think uh, Chase made a great point because they go back into her up under her teeth. They're so She's so stressed at this point. Her voice is calm and normal. It doesn't really change much. It's, it stays almost, there are a couple of cases here in, in a few minutes where we get to fading facts, which we'll talk about in a minute. But in this situation, her, her, her voice stays the same. Her cadence stays the same. The volume. That's what I said. It's just very robotic. It's very uh, like you're talking to a friend about the weather and, you know, today's there's an overcast and it's rainy out and all the puddles in the dry. It's just very matter of it's no urgency. I think there's I think that's why nobody has been charged yet, man chatter, because I think the police are still investigating it. The truth doesn't change. Didn't like her body language. Worded. I stay silent and observed. However, when what I've heard with my ears via mom and her story to Ellie don't add up, we can call it. Absolutely. And if I am wrong, I will apologize. Florida, they need parents' permission to release autopsy report. I doubt we'll ever see it until facts come in trial. Hey, Nicole B. Steven's lips are disgusting. Volume stays the same. When you're talking about something this horrific, and as you talk about it, you're you're re-realizing the horror of what may have happened. You don't talk normally. You get all worked up. We've seen it a thousand times on here. You know, when they when when they're being honest, because she doesn't do anything. She doesn't change much at all. This sounds to me like it's rehearsed, and it sounds like she's planned this. Uh, with her with her boyfriend, which we're going to see a couple of videos of him in a few minutes. This sounds like she's ready for this. That's why she keeps saying "we" dropped wee, him off. Wee, so that we 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 all the way home. We 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 brings a whole other situation in into this as well. And knowing now that they've uh, we know now that they've found her, uh, Madeline, and she was you know obviously she wasn't alive anymore. So. There, there's a lot going on with this, but I, I think this sounds to me, it sounds like something she was prepared for. When, when you're talking, sounds like something she was prepared for. I agree, Scott. Uh, forensics will take a while. I'm okay with them taking a while. I'm okay with them not pushing charges right now. I'm okay. Take the time you are given because we want justice. Well, I do get that, Blondie Locks, because if I had the whole world judging me the way they are judging Jennifer, I'd probably want to be in hiding as well. So I do get that. Um, but, you know, what made her have to go into hiding? These interviews, these inconsistencies, these this, this non-urgency, the fact that she wouldn't even say Maddie's name. Talking to somebody in interrogation, you want to make sure you, one person's story is different than the other person's story. Same story. But you got to make sure they word it differently. And things are said differently. So let's pay attention to that when this guy shows up. Happy birthday, Nicole. I didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, man, Chatter. I said nobody has been charged yet. And I think that's because they are building a case going over the evidence. And, and yes, perhaps Jennifer will be charged in that. I, I think I will not be shocked to find out she is. I'll be shocked to find out she isn't. Um. Wow. Now, that's a good question. And, and perhaps you know the answer here, um, Julie. If the parents end up being suspects, uh, well, the biological father, never mind. I'm sorry, answer my own question. But in a case where if the, the parents, both biological parents were suspects, would it still be granted by their permission? 
Now I do know in the Chris Watts case, part of Chris Watts deal was that they seal the autopsies. Huh? Now the phone being left at the house, she wouldn't have started with, well, she has ADHD and she gets, she's really forgetful. So she left her phone at the house when she left. No, you said she left her phone at the house. We can't track her. You know, she has ADHD. That, that's the second part that you think about because everything is up front. All the details, all the major things are up front in your brain when you're thinking about whatever, what's going on with the situation. You, you don't go to the details of why first and then say she's left her phone. See, and that's what I was saying. The mother was given unnecessary details. Unnecessary details. Give us the facts. We don't need your little stupid details. Your daughter's missing, ma'am. That that's a red flag for me as well. And that single shoulder shrug <laughs> pointing toward her chin, that get when she's talking about ADHD, that makes yep. me think she's bringing that up. I, I don't believe the kid had that either. Uh, because of the way the mother's acting. I think they're adding that and that's why she left her phone. That's why. Yep. And we do find out later that they were taking Maddie to different doctors and no, she was not officially diagnosed. Her phone wasn't pinging around where they, where they found her or, or with when she was with somebody else. Uh, so, well, we know who did it. So um, then um, <laughs> I'll leave it there. It's so much more. And I'm just be covering what you guys come. This is what bothers me. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Um, Good point, just me. She wanted to walk the rest of the way. Again, blaming. Strange that Ali has stated they believe he moved the child's body, but no formal charge as regards the M. I think Stearns has pointed finger at the mom or another family member during his interview. I'd be curious. That's a good, good point. I don't think mom is thinking critically enough. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm allowed to share. It's all right. you whatever you feel comfortable sharing. I know you had conversations with detectives. Um, not sure what that conversation is, but whatever you feel comfortable sharing that we put the awareness out there. Well, we know yeah. it. She so. was uh, spotted walking, uh, by the church by the middle school uh, on the cameras they saw her hang out in the parking lot for a little bit and then get up and leave they didn't see a vehicle or anything else they just saw her walk away uh around 9 a.m heading towards the school but she never made it um yeah. what has the school said have you given in contact with the school yes um that they're doing everything they can they've given me all their resources the principals called me. They've looked at their cameras. Cameras, um, I don't think they've caught anything on the cameras. It's too far away from the sidewalk. Everything is too grainy, so they can't see specific faces. Um, but they've looked. Um, I agree, Julie. But you have to remember, at this point, it wasn't a case. At this point, it was just a, a situation where a, uh, a a young girl was missing. Her daughter was missing. So at this point, there was no case, which is what makes her statement bizarre to me. Thank you, Miss L. You know, unless she knew there was a case. Um, I'm just waiting to hear anything else from them. Is this normal behavior? Not to at all. To just not show up or call or text or anything? Not at all, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not worried. I'm just not sure why. She... Like, from time to time she will leave her cell phone at home accidentally and that's actually what happened yesterday she left her phone at home she went to school what's with the weird eye squints there i hope they tell us i'm going to go forward a little bit because i think we've heard this so many times now i just want to hear what they say about it what's with the squinting and keep in mind as we're saying this none of us are saying that she was involved directly and that if someone does have guilty knowledge they right Hey, Jason. Yo. What's going on? Can you hear me? So, I can, yeah. All the, like, all the 
I don't know, crime channels or what true crime all those like the that chapter like those type of things like if you watch the interviews on there all the people do like pretty much what she's doing in that interview like they set they they give these little details it's like they're setting up like a defense or a way out in advance you know what i mean like with the she had adhd she forgot her foot like Oh yeah, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. You get what I'm saying? It's like she's she. Oh. For it's me, it's like she's given. Right, she just she just like uh, tossing stuff out there. It's like she's thinking in her mind. Oh shit! What if they ask this? What if they're thinking this? Like she's trying to get out ahead of it. If that makes sense. Right. I'm, right. I'm, like she's giving the answers to the questions she knows people are going to ask. Why didn't she have her cell phone? Oh, you know, she forgot her cell phone that day because she's ADHD and forgetful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She already knows what the questions are going to be. And she already has the answers, in my opinion, studied. Yeah. Yeah. Like she prepped herself for this. And then like she changed gears from like you. I forget if it was you were mentioning it or if somebody was saying it in the in the chat. But she changed gears from giving her name to like right into the role right into what she had prepped herself to go and it was so noticeable like she could yep. dictate oh yeah this is my name and then how do you feel mm. and it was like a you know like a blanket over her like she like came over like she switched gear so fast and then, oh yeah that's right i gotta remember to go back to this uh poor mom and uh i can't breathe type of thing right. and it and it was right. like so obvious and it, the other thing is I, it was too much for me to type. Um, I never like in the whole, all the two years of like being in chats and stuff, like even when it's not like a true crime thing, even if it's something that's within the community and somebody's, you know, right or wrong or whatever, I've never seen like this many mothers, like amongst all of you be wrong about something like this. Like you, you, you guys pick up on things that I can't, like, I can't pick up on things. I mean, like, you know, I have a daughter. I mean, she, she's in college now, but like moms pick up on things more than dads would. And I'm noticing like in the chat, there's so many things where I'm like, yo, that's right. That's right. And there's just, just like, there's no way there's like this many hundred of people here both seeing the same things and then other things are brought up like you know to build off of it and that's one of the things that sells me on her being full of it because you know like, like they say one person says it like you know might not be true but when two people you know what i'm saying but yeah that's that's one of the things that is like how can and i'm sure the people within that community wherever the, you know wherever she lives they all see the same thing you know what i mean it would be interesting to to maybe eventually find out like you know how they were in that community like if people thought something was up with them prior to that you know what i mean because I'm, I'm sure you know a uh, uh, mom down the block was like yo something's up with this dude something's up with this lady in this you know what i mean yeah if there was any previous vibes to them i totally get it now there was there was there are situations where a lot of people feel that a parent is guilty <clears throat> and they come out innocent. One big one that stands out in my mind is Athena Strand. She was the seven-year-old little girl that was um, accidentally ran over by the UPS man who then took her and, and basically killed her. Yeah. He did. He killed her. I remember. Yeah. Her, yep. Yeah. Because the mom sent her off to, to the trailer that was in the backyard and they were arguing and, you know, just all of that. It made us think, the mother did something and we were wrong collectively as a whole, everybody was wrong. Um, and, and I'll be honest, I do hope we are wrong in this situation again, but I don't feel like we are. I just, I, I even the behavioral panelists don't feel like we are a lot of people who have credentials that I never will are sensing this. And the police just recently came out and stated there's so many inconsistencies that we are now looking over Jennifer's statements. That means we are looking at her as a suspect. Hey, Dippy, welcome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And like, even, all right. So that was one time, you know, like, uh, you guys were wrong. Everybody was wrong, but that's, 
you know, that's not like a common thing. Even even when it's not like true crime stuff, even when it's like in-house stuff, like people that come and go, people will start rumors. You know what I'm talking about. Like even that stuff, when when the fact when the facts start to come out, there's always people popping up and they'll be like, Yo, remember this is what we said, remember this is and I'm like, damn man, you guys knew that way back then. You guys were on yeah. it. But it wasn't you know what I mean? Yeah. That's all that's all I wanted to pop up and say. That's it. It was like too much for me to tell you. <laughs> I appreciate you coming up. <clears throat> yeah, I just I I unfortunately there's just this feeling with the mom and you know, and, and as you said, a lot of us did feel it before the police basically came out and now the police wouldn't officially say she's a suspect. They, they said no comment. They're not going to comment to it. But what they said prior to that <clears> tells <throat> us she's, she's now a suspect. Yeah. You were, yeah, that was like, uh, like almost immediately you were on it. I remember you saying it last yeah. week sometime. something's up with her. She's yeah. sus. Yeah. Well, and then like, so yeah. Well, I was going to say, Lawton Haley has a good comment here because uh, mom makes a point to say that uh, her, Maddie, and Stefan were so close that Maddie told them everything and that Maddie even told them that she had a crush at school. To me, that was just a way to make the mom look like she was closer to Maddie than she is because the fact that it matters at the end of the day, she didn't even know if her daughter knew her address. So how close were you to Maddie? That you don't even know these basics. You didn't make it to her birthday party. You said you, you guys haven't fought in a while. I think she threw that out there to make her sound like a good mother. And in fact, I think she was a liar. Because if she were close to Maddie, she would have known that her daughter is being abused under her care. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's like another thing she's tossing out to present to, uh, you know, the interview, the world, whatever. To present like, um, you know, this is what I think they uh would expect a mom to be close to her daughter. you know what i mean another one of those things she she's presenting as part of her role as part of her little uh right. acting session like the mom role. yeah and this yeah. is another good yeah. point. and then like if you went to your if yeah. I, like when i go to my child's school if my child doesn't come out i go into the office and i say hey you know i'm here to pick up he didn't come out and normally they'll call them over the, the, the airline thing or they'll say, you know, the child's not here. Um, why does she wait to text or email the teacher? Uh, sometimes teachers don't even get back until the next day. She took a real chance at emailing one of the teachers instead of just walking her butt inside the building and saying, hey, you know, Maddie didn't come out today. Great point. Just me. Great point. There on the prop. Like you could just walk in there and have a face to face and find out what's up. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah. All right, I'm jumping down. I just wanted to say that. That's it. Well, I appreciate you coming up yeah. as always. Thank you so All much. Right. Bye. Bye. That is such a good point. Hey, Tammy, I, I, what a great, great point to point out. Just me. Who would take the chance? Why wouldn't you just go inside the building? Why would you email? And then what really bothers me is that the police met her at the school, not at the apartment. Why are you meeting at the school? It's not even the last place Maddie was seen. Maddie wasn't there at all. And then to top it off, she makes them get a warrant to even search her apartment. Yep, lie to me, unfortunately. Teenager not fighting with her mother in more than a few days sounds strange to me. Maybe it's just my daughter who wants to fight me almost. My daughter wants to fight every day, Penny. I'm telling you. Every day. And I don't think it's abnormal to admit that. You know, teenagers, especially teenage girls and their mamas, they fight. Yeah. Sometimes I think my daughter wakes up wanting to fight. You know what I mean? Like, it's just I'm like, all right, we're going to do this today. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, the fact that she's like, and we haven't fought in a couple of days. Bizarre. Thank you, Kraken. It's a bizarre statement. Absolutely, Dippy. I have the uh, link pinned to the top if you'd like to come up. Longer than it takes making an arrest, the safer mom feels. You think so? I think it had me more worried. I think it would have me more worried. Why couldn't mom pick her up at school on time? Well, she did, apparently, allegedly. But she still didn't call the police until 8 o'clock that night. Couldn't agree more, Julie. Could not agree more hell kids in general are tough they're tough as toddlers as babies as <laughs> you name it there's never a time it's not tough um 
And I think like, like stated, I think Maddie made it, or I'm sorry, Jennifer made it appear that she was closer to Maddie because she thinks that's what we want to hear. Oh yeah. we're And it was bizarre to me that she brought up. Oh, we, uh, you know, she even told us she had a crush on a boy. What? Hey, Debbie. Hey. It's nice to meet Excuse you. Excuse me, I've been sick, so I'm trying to get over whatever I had. Same. We're just getting over a cold as well. I hope you feel better soon. You too. Um, I've been doing this case for like probably a week now on my channel, and I just can't get over some of the things that I've seen. Like... The mom, she's she's very sus, but I don't want to sit there and blame her just yet. You know, like, how are you going to say in one interview that we took her and dropped her off? And then the next interview, you say, well, I didn't take her. It was my partner. But yeah. if you, and if you hear, listen to one of his friends that were talking that had just seen him two weeks before this happened. Um. He says that they were not together. He was supposedly Stefan or whatever his name is was just renting a room. That's the one of the spare rooms in that condo or whatever they were living in. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard that. I heard the interview uh, with the the supposed friend that said that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but from the statements I've gathered of that day, Stefan wasn't in the apartment. Stefan came or the condo, he came to pick Maddie up. And I would like to know where he was. I would also like to know. Well, he stays with his mom and dad in Port St. Lucie, I think it was. Yeah. When he's not staying at her house, he stays at his mom's. And supposedly the only reason why he was there was because of her birthday party Sunday. Yeah. That that makes sense. If he if you you know if he stayed because, the night there, because I, supposedly they had like such a good tight relationship, and that Maddie would always text or call him when he wasn't around. So what if he was grooming her this whole time and not necessarily? Well, he doing was horrible crap that we already assume he has. But what if it was like more that he groomed her into her actually falling in love with him? Well, yeah, absolutely. That happens. I mean, we know going back at least two years that, that he was touching her, mm -hmm. uh, but how long did it take before he got the confidence to go ahead and record those things? So yeah, no doubt. That's usually how it goes in these situations. Uh, the child is groomed and, and Stefan likely was crying because he really regretted whatever he did. There's no doubt in my mind that he had a relationship with Maddie of that sense. And, and literally that's what's sad about it, is that sometimes these children do end up having a love for their abusers. You hear it and see it time and time again, but Stefan didn't sleep there the night of because the, the mom called him to come pick Maddie up to take her to school. Allegedly. See, I so, never heard that part yet. Yeah. So he wouldn't have been already there. Um, unless he was at a friend's house that wasn't far away. Unless he was there and, and, and something happened the night before and they're both just lying to us is what I'm thinking. But yeah. Well, oh yeah. He was buying her gifts. He was talking about her on yeah. all the forums, the Reddits. It was bizarre. He absolutely was grooming her. No doubt about it. Yeah, I was reading some of his Reddit posts. That's like crazy. It's disgusting. Um, yeah, beyond. But um, they were saying that, uh, I don't know, the first friend that I heard talk, that's supposedly the ex-friend. I didn't kind of like really latch on to things he was saying. It just didn't seem all real. But then when I listened to the, the friend that he grew up with and then the friend that he was friends with all through middle and some high school, they sound more believable than the first one, which would have been well, actual. But the that first one, one that said that he dated a 17 year old that was really 14. Yeah. So the first one came on my panel and he pretty much walked back a lot of what he said. I, I don't I, I don't I, I don't doubt the guy knew Stefan. I don't think he is relating anything with firsthand knowledge. I think he is relating things that, as he stated, him and his friends have been speaking since this happened and they're recounting old situations and saying, oh, maybe this was this or this was that. But the other guy, the other friend that came forward um, who says that he, he in recent times was friends with Stefan and they play games together and cards together. And, yeah, you know, I believe him a lot friend. more. Yeah. 
I think it was Frank. I think that was his name. It's just, it's really weird. This case, I mean, like, if not for nothing, if we haven't grown from Summer's case into knowing what we should know by now, learning different things, you know, like, I don't think anybody's ever going to really learn. But I've learned a lot in the last three years um, being on here and doing this. And it's just... It baffles me how many parents do this, how how many parents even have knowledge of this type of stuff and just leave it alone. Oh, yeah, that's it. I mean, that if that's true, that's scary. It's extremely it's like, scary. So many kids go missing on a daily. Yep. On a daily. So many kids get hurt on a daily by their parents. Um but with this case, it's just really out of the norm because I've heard I've seen people saying, well, she might have been PG. I don't think she was. I really don't. Um, I looked at the videos from her birthday party the day before and pictures from the day before. And she just I don't know. In my opinion, she doesn't look like. Someone I, that I, to be honest, I think that's just such an easy go-to thing that everybody's minds are going to go to, knowing mm -hmm. her age, knowing what we know took place with her. I think people that are analyzing her birthday photo and, oh, da, da, I, I think that's all stupid. I think even if that were the case, it's not our business. She is a minor. That is, you know, the police are going to investigate and know all of that. We shouldn't. We don't have a right to that. Exactly. I, and I don't think it would be a reason to uh, take her life. I don't think that at all. No, I, I don't think it plays into it at all. I mean, either way, he was going to get in trouble. Absolutely. Man, well, I, I, not necessarily. I mean, you know, it, they could have, not necessarily, to be honest. Well, I mean, if she would have been found out that she was and she stayed alive and went through the whole thing. If but they even that found out been done. it was him, yeah, he would have been in trouble. Right. If they would have found out it was him. But that even could have been done on like a hush hush situation where. You know, it, it, what it needs to be found out, it was him. I, I don't know. I, I I don't like it, to be honest. I think this poor girl has gone through enough that I don't even like considering or putting that on her name. I know it's the yeah. reality. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those taboo just, things. I just like, I, I'm type. I don't really like putting sh stuff out there unless I know, like, it's from, like, an accredited a credible source like the news or the family. Right. You know, something like that. I, I never go on hearsay. And even if I do speak of something that hearsay, I, I'll tell them right out. You know, this is something I heard. I don't know if it's truth. Please don't please fact check your own on your own because that's just something that I just don't like doing it. Yeah. But I did hear a conversation with one of the friends that where she said she told her and what is her name? Jennifer? Yes. Um, that he was touching her and the mom blew it off as just an attention thing. Yeah. I would like to see actual proof of that. I, 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 cause the only thing that we've seen come forward so far, as far as that goes, is the one friend that said she smiles, you know, bright like a star. Um, and he said he, the, that she said the stepfather was mean in 2022. I haven't seen actual proof yet that, that um, she did or that the mother knew. If I can find it, because I don't like recording things. I'm just that type of person. I don't record anything and I don't screenshot anything unless it's like pertinent to me. But I will see if I can go back and find the video on that one. Was um, it like the actual friend speaking? Yeah. It was one of the little girls. Oh, well, that's um, interesting. She said she told Matt, Maddie told her that he was touching her. And this came from the child herself on the video saying this? The yeah. The kid was sitting uh, next to the mother. That's weird. I I have not seen that yet. I don't know if it's still up or not. I've only seen it that one time. And I was like, wow. And I, I can't remember. And I couldn't remember who it was on. So I have to go back through all my videos that I saved. Yeah. That's really I'm interesting. It. But yeah, I did hear that. But it's coming from a kid too. So we got to take that with a grain of salt as well. Right. So I haven't really told many people. You're actually probably the first creator I did tell that to. Only because, like I said, I have I don't 100% believe everything a child says. Because, you know, some especially with this going on now, she could just say it just to be putting more hate on him. 
which I wouldn't blame her, but still the point, you know. Right. Got- sometimes the kids sometimes kids will just kind of speak up and, and say things to kind of feel part of or or known of. And and honestly, if that's true, if Maddie did tell this this girl this and this girl didn't speak up, you would think at that point if Maddie told um a friend, then the way kids are and the way things rotate, somebody somewhere as an adult would have caught wind of it and the school would have intercepted if it if. was, because, uh, you know, I mean, they're middle school. Rumors spread all the time in middle school. Something like that would have. So I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't doubt mom knew something. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, she told mom too, and mom just blew her off like it was, like she didn't believe her. <laughs> That's horrific. But I don't know. There's something off about mom, too. I don't like blaming the parents. I like that. To me, that's the justice system is for. Let them handle that. I'm not here to judge nobody. Oh, I'm, well, I'm here to judge the fuck out of cases. people. <laughs> I, I always say I'm just here to keep the case, the names of the cases out there. That's it. Yeah. No, I totally get that. I There's just certain situations where it's hard not to judge. I mean, yeah. to me, there's... You know, so many red flags with the mother. I mean, even the, the behavioral panelists here are saying, yeah, the mom's shady. There, There's, you know, it seems like it's, it's, she practiced this. She studied it. She's speaking not off of from her heart, but speaking off of memory. And I, I don't know. I just. Yeah, look at how many times she looked up instead of looking straight down. Absolutely. And him looking straight down and not looking up. Like, there was something really, really, really going on. Like, I believe mom knew more than what she I just, I don't know. They're saying that she wasn't alive at at 8 o'clock or something. And mom said she's seen, you know, one minute mom's like, the last time I talked to her was the night before. And then she told the cops the last time she talked to her or the last time she seen her was at 8 a.m. Which one is it? The night before or 8 a.m.? Right. And we know neither of us true because she was already deceased at 8, 19 in the truck. So <clears throat> the mother lied. The mother lied about seeing her get dressed that day. And the mother states that she's wearing black shorts. And we find out she wasn't. She was wearing jeans. So she's lying. Absolutely lying. And, and I think, and she's lied enough that the police have come out and said, yes, Jennifer has lied to us. Absolutely. Oh, and then there were, and then I heard another room. Oh my God, this pissed me off so bad. I'm sorry. I just have nobody, I didn't have nobody else to talk to about it besides my mods. Um, somebody had said that I was in a chat the other day. And it really made me mad because um, somebody was like, oh, well, mom was caught on the video with him. And when they took the video from the phone, I'm like, well, that's got to be a lie. Because if that was so true, she'd be sitting right next to him right now. Yeah, that that's just people are speculating that now. Like, oh, what if mom was in the truck? And no, no, I don't believe it. Because if she was, she'd be sitting in jail right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just... I, I think the facts of the case are horrific enough. I think Ed and all the other, um, you know, tibbets and speculation, everything makes it more horrific. And of course, it's, it's thoughts that we have, right? I mean, the reality is she's 13 years old. She's being essayed. There, there's a very valid chance of her uh, being pregnant. Yes. Yeah. But we don't have to take that and run with it. Let, let, let you know, think it. Sure. You know. A very strong feeling. Stefan took photos for deceased at the home, and that's why they're sure it happened in Kissimmee. They definitely have something they're not going to tell us, Caffeinated Slug. And, and that's something, as a true crime community, we have to accept that we are not entitled to all of the information. Nope. And I've been saying that since for two years. Like, we're not entitled to nothing. We need to be happy for what we do get. Right. Um, but all the speculations and the rumors and the lies that get put out don't help it at all. No, it never does. Well, and Fuzzy Rainbow, uh, that's that's a good comment. But the thing is, we know Stefan was there the night after the party. So apparently the party was at a relative's house and they drove Maddie home, which I find weird because Stefan was there. So why didn't Stefan? But whatever. But the way the mom says it is she showed us her gifts and was so excited. So Stefan was there that night. Right. But then for whatever reason, likely because of what actually took place, mom th- it then distanced Stefan from being in the place. And it turned into, um, you know, he was called to come pick Maddie up, take her to school because mom overslept. But yet mom's awake at 8 a.m. claiming she saw Maddie getting dressed 
school's not till 9 30. Well, then you're not, you know, there, there, there's no. something missing. And I think what's missing is whatever happened likely happened overnight from Sunday into Monday a.m. I believe that too. Um, but I do know mom works at Disney, so she has to be there pretty early. Um, well, no, mom's a party of a uh, vacation planner for Disney. Yeah. And their hours are so, usually, I, yeah. I thought they get to make their own hours. I don't know. Um, I think it's like nine to five unless she has a, a thing on the weekends. And that's what she said. She said she was working that Sunday. Um, mm. And then a lot of people are like, well, why plan a part th birthday party on a day that you're not going to be working? I mean, that you're working with the type of work that she does. It's not a, a Monday through Friday thing. It's whenever the parties are. So she has to be there for that event, whether or not. Ah. So my cousin works at Disney. Um, she works in the one of the HR departments. So I was asking a bunch of questions to her. Um, and Stefan did work there. He worked up there till September or October. Right. That's what I was saying in the beginning of this. Uh, you know, everybody's saying Disney's lying, Disney's lying, but they're technically not because he was not a current employee of theirs. No. Welcome, Salty Man. Newbie from Illinois. Just wondering, what about the biological father? So I he spoke about this earlier, and um, one of the comments I received was from a woman who was friends with the biological father and his wife. And I had made a, a statement. I, I spoke incorrectly. I had stated that for Jennifer to plan a party when she couldn't be there, being she was the only bio mother or bio parent that could be there, to me sounded off. It was a 13th birthday, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this person thought I meant as if the father was absent from her life. I didn't. I just meant she was the only bio family in the state that could be there. You know, bio father doesn't live in the state. But this person who is friendly with the bio father stated that um, Jennifer kept Maddie from him and that he fought for more time with Maddie. It was a uh, parental, you know, and, and Maddie was just recently there with them. So from the what I heard, not he was at the party, though. Wait, I'm sorry, what? From what I heard, he was the step the dad and stepmom were at the birthday party. At Maddie's 13th birthday party? Yeah, I don't know if it was the one that was on her birthday or if it was the one that was planned on Sunday. But I know he was there from what I understand, he was there from the birth for the birthday. I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I thought that's what that one friend that said he seen him like two weeks ago said. I swear that's what he said. Uh, have any, has anybody in the, the chat room heard that? Um, I know the father lives in a different state. He lives in Texas. He's him and his new wife are military. Okay. Uh, we know the mom wasn't there. And she, but yeah, she's the her. only kid through her mom, but she has step siblings. Hmm. Let me, I'm looking back at this comment. Um, okay so this is what they i don't think he was at the party um because she just spent the fall break with her father in texas uh the other side of the family who loved and wanted her more than anything and then she says um that's what all the parents say though yeah the uh, the but no. she's saying that Jennifer would make excuses why Maddie couldn't visit, even though she never had to fork out for the visits. Uh, she did make sure to cash in all the child support checks. She knew it was only a matter of time before Maddie slipped up and spoke about the abuse to dad and stepmom. Maddie wanted to move in with them. And Jennifer and Maddie had that conversation many times leading up to this tragedy. So this person who knows the bio family is saying Maddie wanted to go live with the father. And we know why, though. Yeah, and and that Jennifer withheld withheld Maddie from from having as much time with her dad as she wanted to have. Hmm, that's really sad. It's just too. Uh, what is going on with these people, man? What is going on over here, y'all? Yeah, uh, this is it's a really devastating. The, the whole thing's devastating. At the end of the day, is as a thirteen year old girl. Um, we, like we, we know for at least two years up until current time, she was being abused in her own home. 
we know Jennifer and Stefan had a rocky on again, off again relationship and that the mother told inconsistencies that the police are now side eyeing her. So I, I'm, I will not be shocked if charges come out against the mother. Just will not be shocked. Oh, there probably will be. Cause I feel like, you know, they know that she lied. So like, why are you going to, the only thing that I can see that, that she might get charged with is neglect for leaving her child in his care. But his friends have always said he was a weird person. Like, yeah. he collected weird things. And I mean, it's not really weird for an adult to collect memorabilia things. Because I have a lot of, I know a lot of people that collect stuff like that. But to still See, play with them is a different story. The, the whole thing is, um, I, I feel like, we feel like she should be charged with neglect. I don't know if, realistically, if she'll be charged with neglect. Because... The fact of the matter is he he they were together for seven years. Um, he was referred to as a stepfather, and it's not illegal to leave your kids in the care of a, a trusted custodian, you know, an adult. So, but knowing that she was abused, yeah, I feel like we personally would like her to be charged. Uh, if we see them charging the crumblies for what happened, you know, so does that open up a gateway for it? I did take a poll on one of my streams, and almost 700 people said that she should at the least be charged with neglect. Yeah. At least, if nothing more, um, she should be charged. I think she should be charged a little bit more. Like, I don't, I can't off the top of my head think of what I want, what what it is that I think she should be charged with. My brain is still foggy, but um, where's my notes? I I took a lot of notes the other day. I was watching everything back to back to back that I have in my playlist. Um. I just keep going back to that interview with him. Like it, none of it was sincere. None of it. Like, I think he was only upset because he knew it was only a matter of time before he got caught. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's what he was upset for. I, I think, I truly think he loved her. I think he did love her. And I think a lot of his emotions were genuine, but not based on what he was saying, based on what he knew. I, I definitely think that, um, I mean, because even when he broke up with Jennifer, obviously we're, you know, we like to think of it as, as like a, uh, father daughter type of bond. Grady wasn't her, her father, but that's the title that they held. And we know it's more than that, <clears throat> but I do think that he loved her. He was on Reddit forums bragging about her. He was, you know, that the guy was literally in love with her. His friends said that he would always mention how he missed Maddie, but never really Jennifer, um, yeah, sickly. He was in love with her. Yeah. Lindsay, I'm with you. He it makes me sick. Like he was attracted to that generation of kids, like anywhere from the age 11 to 14, I think. See, I think the abuse with Maddie started prior to that. I do. Um, and, and so far we haven't seen or heard anything stating there were other children. The affidavit wrote very clearly that the, the child, it was a child in his phone, and it was Maddie. So I personally, well, I'm curious I mean, they didn't say Maddie; they just said a child under the age of twelve. So, but we can well, guess. They gave, her, they gave her birth. House. They gave her birthday. Yeah, they said it happened on her birthday. That yeah. I mean, of course, that's where our mind is going to go. But I mean, I I believe it could have been other children as well, though. No, the, no, the the date of birth for the child. No, 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 not the pictures that they got. I'm just saying, other children as well it could no, be yeah but i'm know. saying I'm, I'm not just saying the date of abuse was on her birthday the child in the photo's birthday was listed as maddie's birthday yeah not just the date of the abuse yeah um, yeah no no that's but, i mean like not just maddie though he's had he has other kids was there more than one child on found in the photos i don't know about the photos but i mean like i said when he was 20 he was dating a 14 year old so i mean yeah, she also lied about being 17. So it, it's kind of one well, of those. No, like that. told everybody he was, she was 17. Oh, I thought the, the girl told everybody she was 17. Because no, the, friend the girl told the told his friend that, you know, after this after she's seen all this happen, she's like, you know, I wasn't 17, though, right? I was 14. Right, because she, she was telling like, everybody that she was 14, 17 so he could bring her around. But they were still like, no, she's too young. Oh, uh, 
the way I took that was like she was confessing, like, yeah, by the way, I wasn't 17 at that time. I was 14, as if she was kind of in on it, which to be honest, young girls will do that. Like there are there yeah. are younger girls that will lie about their age. Um Especially if they and, look it. Right. And that is it's disgusting. But I don't know if that's enough to say that he, without a doubt, was doing this to other children. The chances of him doing it to only one child are very slim. But the affidavit was written as if there was one child found, uh, which is horrific, absolutely horrific, especially the fact he worked at Disney, he was around children, it, the whole thing's sick. They were, I saw, um, I don't know if you've seen Gray Hughes's interview with the friends, he did like yeah. three different interviews. Um, one of them said that, uh, what did he say about, he said something about that, um, his mom, he said his mom was very abusive, like physically and emotionally. So, you know, of course, the next question people were asking, well, what about S.A.? They were like, well, I don't know if that was going on, but they did have a weird relationship. Mm. So, I mean, you know, usually they say it starts somewhere. I mean, yeah, that's always a possibility that this, I, but I, yeah, I don't know. Not in yeah. Not yeah. in people that do it is because it's done to them first. That's what they know. Ugh. It's gross. It's disgusting. And uh, I just don't think people can be re hit, re, re what's that word I'm looking for? Rehabilitate it. Yeah, from that. From from being an essayer. I just don't think it. I don't think they can be re hit. They should be out in the public. Yeah. Like Florida has their own little village for SARs. Yeah, I didn't hear the physical abuse with mom either, guidance. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm talking about his mom and him, not her, not Jen. Right. I think. Um, Depends on where your mental state is at, Terry, because. I know a lot of people, my cousin just killed his brother and I know he loved him to pieces, but he's sitting in jail right now for second degree murder. So, I mean, Oh, sorry. To get it, happens, that. it does happen. That's a different story. <laughs> Unconstitutional. That's ridiculous. Yeah. We heard the mom would pay things off. We hear the mom would say a lot yeah. of things when it, that's what I'm saying. They had a weird, like she would always drum, drum, it, drum it into his head that he was he was a bad kid, he was dumb, he was this, he was that, because he got hit by, ran over by that car. And then as he got older, she would pay, like if he got in any kind of trouble, she'd pay off the people so they didn't get, like call the cops and stuff. And the one friend found all kinds of uh, child yeah. stuff on his computer and a file. Yeah, that's what the guy claimed. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's a whole reason why he stopped talking to him and some other people stopped talking to him. So, I don't know what's what's real and what's not real. I don't um, know, because that, that guy actually came on my panel and he kind of walked back what he said there. So, I, I don't know how much I believe Chase when he says all that about the child CP and all that. Um, I don't know if he was walking it back because he, he realized he, you know, incriminated himself in a crime, but... I don't know how much I believe the whole what was yeah. on his. Well, I, that, I didn't even hear the one from you and him, but the one from him and Gray, I was just like from get from jump gate when I started listening. I'm like, I don't know if I believe this dude. Yeah. Like, is he in it for like his for his 15 minutes of fame or is he in it to help or is he in it to make it worse? What is he in it for? Like, yeah, I don't know. I see him going around to a lot of channels though. So it seems like he has uh kind of he's not he's not given much insight to to stefan more so than like kind of hearsay ish type of things so i don't know the other guy that that was <laughs> friends with him up until recent times he gave a little more because he knew stefan up until recent times so he gave yeah. a little more insight that's the one who really played tabletop games with yeah he said he was yeah. with him like two weeks prior to this happening yeah it, the the whole thing's just really sad. And I get people are stunned, like, how can somebody I know, you know, done something like this? But the fact of the matter is, uh, he had the fairy lease is right now, 
nobody's been charged in Maddie's death, but he's at the very least being held on the child, um, the CP. And, and this is horrific. He first said he trusted, but he completely then said he didn't know when he was getting called out. Yeah. And I think it's because we, we were on more of the stand of like, you know, how could you be aware of that and not report it? So I think that made him a little uncomfortable. Progress or consider those low risk of reoffending. You know, you can be on the, the registry if you get caught peeing in public. So there there is, I mean, which is why there's levels to it, right? Now mm -hmm. you have in Audrey's case, Audrey Cunningham, the family's coming forth and saying because Stephen in that case was not on the registry, they were unable to protect Audrey. And that if he had been, they they would have done things differently. A lot of people aren't buying it. Well, they said they were giving him a second chance on with Audrey. Yeah, that they didn't know that he had, you know, uh, hurt, hurt a child before. I think that's crazy. Yeah. Like, it, just what he was charged with, why did he not? Like, you would, you would think he'd have been put on the list. You really would have. Yep. Unfortunately, uh, they dropped the ball. Uh, third friend stated, yeah, I, I don't know how much value I give into what the friends are stating, though. And, and, you know, how would he know he was into porn at a young age? I don't some of this shit. I feel like people just say what they think the public wants to hear because they want to give a juicy detail so that they stick out. I don't know. Hey, Dire Wolf, right, Polish, that that wasn't a big enough sign. Uh, says a lot about them, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Um, the grandmom's interview. All right. Yeah. So again, grandma. this is the, you didn't watch it yet. Uh -uh. Yeah. So add uh -huh. to the tune of a Barney song. I love Barney. If all the raindrops, I absolutely love Barney. <laughs> um, this is translated into English. So Toto's grandmother admitted she was a little girl with a lot of fears who could not sleep alone. I think she can do that. She's a kid, like with many fears, so much so that she does not sleep alone. And I do not believe she can leave or run away, leave her house. But a grandmother added that this Sunday they were celebrating her birthday and that she did not notice any behavior that could indicate plans to run away. She was very, very happy. All her little friends from school, which are two little friends, it was very nice. She had the happy time, content, took lots of photos, hugged her family. So at her birthday party, she was a normal, excited 13-year-old girl. It does, you know, so the whole running away thing, the grandmom's dismissing that immediately and saying, no, she was surrounded by love. There was no signs. And, oh, that's good to know, Jet Life. I just keep hearing it. And I'm like, wow. Sometimes you have a red dot. Yeah. Well, Stephen didn't have. Those Stephen words and didn't are have ringing it. in my ears, and I think her previous night, Sunday, and it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her. That is. And now they are not going to wake up in the campaign. I am not carrying and not my side. Always mine. And in the church's chambers, they see a girl with a green sweater. See, that didn't make any sense. So, again, it is being stated that Jennifer woke up uh, tired and asked Stefan to come take Maddie to school. Maddie didn't have to go to school until 9.30 a.m. She's claiming she saw Maddie getting dressed at 8 a.m., which we know is a lie. So that whole tired thing just doesn't add up. She's lying about something. Where she sits in the parking lot for a while. And a few minutes later, she gets up and heads to school. That's all that is known about her. And with every day that passes, it gets worse. One loses hope after almost three days missing. We don't know what else to do. Subtitles by the Amara.org. In my mind, someone took her. Maddie's grandmother, oh. Yolanda Zambrano, 
gave at least one interview I can find, I can only find chunks of it, to Telemundo 31, to a reporter. It was February 28th, basically the third day that Madeline was missing. She can't do that. She's a kid, like with many fears, so much so that she does not sleep alone. And I do not believe she can leave or run away, leave her house. But it's my so that's very interesting. So again, Maddie was a kid with many fears to the point she couldn't sleep alone. Well, yeah, the monster was in her home. That that breaks my heart. Karma, it seems like there were a lot of people around Maddie that absolutely loved her. Uh, her biological father, his wife, they wanted Maddie. They loved Maddie. The grandmother seems to love Maddie. I personally don't think whatever happened to Maddie happened intentionally. Very curious. What do you think, Dippy? Do you think it was intentional? Do you think it was accidental? What do you think the outcome's going to be? I don't know. I really this this case is just. I would hope whatever it was was accidental, but for some reason, why I just keep leaning towards. They felt like nothing else could be done. Mm. I'm curious. I, I, I'm. This is what I'm definitely going to stay on top of. I'm very curious. I, I look forward to the charges. I look forward to seeing if mom is charged. I, I just. Another thing I don't understand though, she said that Maddie didn't know her address to get home, right? Mm -hmm. But she knew the address to where her grandma stayed, worked. Well, she said that, yeah, she said the grandmom's work was down the street from the school and that, you know, maybe Maddie went there. She, yeah. Yeah, she said she didn't think she knew, she didn't think she knew where she lived. What? Right. Another thing, I've, I'm sorry, my daughter and my nieces all have ADHD. I've never once seen them kids leave their phone anywhere. Yeah. I'm, it, it just didn't make sense to add that in. Like like the, the behavioral panelist said, and like we said, it just seemed like it was blame factors. It, a way to blame Maddie for what was happening. Uh, lousy excuses for what she thought people were going to have questions to. Like, oh, where's her phone? Yeah. I, I don't know. This little girl's been through a lot. I could tell you that much. Yep. Absolutely. And then even after death, she has her photo exploited again. It's horrific. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't believe the sheriff did that. And then come back with, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to put a picture of me and or somebody in the older people out that we were doing something for. Right. Yeah. Okay. I didn't thank God. I didn't. I wasn't on Instagram at that point, so I didn't get to see it. Thank God. It's, it's horrific. It, it, it's, it's not a whoopsie. I mean, it's a, it's a serious thing, and, and he should lose his position. Loss of life. Jen is way smarter than we think. Yeah, and, and my understanding is they already had a funeral, and Maddie was cremated, and I'm sure... Um, I don't know if she was cremated, but I do know they had her service the other day. Yeah. I, I it's, the, the whole thing's just... She says Everybody, everybody's like, well, what about the autopsy? It takes forever to come back. I was like, they got everything they need. They get that just because they, they released the body doesn't mean they didn't get everything. They won't release the body without having everything. Exactly. For one. For two, they're not going to tell us what, what's all on the autopsy anyway, because she is a minor unless it goes to the court. Right. Once it goes to court, then we'd be able to um, get that information. Maybe. Sometimes, sometimes Maybe. you don't. Uh, I like they said. Um, there's been new laws passed since Gannon, so we'll, we'll find out. What would be the motive for the sheriff to intentionally? I don't think he intentionally did it. I do think it was an accident. I just don't think it's an accident to be like, "Well, sorry." I think it's a serious accident. Matter yeah. of fact, if it was my daughter, it'd be. <laughs> be, be like a lawsuit. Yeah. I just I don't know. And then they said, "Mom ran into hiding." What are you hiding from? She could. I mean, with that, I kind of understand because the, the public opinion is rough, absolutely rough. So uh, she's probably hiding for safety, to be honest, because I think I would. The, 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 the people don't play. You know what I mean? The, once the yeah. Internet's on. I mean, yeah, and, what they've done to quite a few people. <laughs> yeah. I think Maddie possibly came home with attitude because of Stefan and the mom took away her technology. That's why she didn't have it. She definitely knew what was going on. Mm, that's an interesting theory. I do like that theory. 
That's probably one yeah. of the best ones I've heard yet. And I'm not a theory person. The theory, <laughs> I don't like that. But I do like that theory. That's. But then again, that could be the reason why she's like, oh, no, me and Maddie haven't argued or nothing in weeks. Right. Nicole B., I don't think they would, not without charges yet. They, they have to uh, keep the integrity of their investigation first and foremost. You know what I mean? And also, she is a minor. I, I don't. I think we won't see anything until we see charges. And again, so far, no, there has been no charges in her death. So, however, he should lose his job. Yeah. Does anyone know definitely if mom did or didn't attend the funeral? Just rumors that she didn't. I haven't seen any. He did. I don't think yeah. she was that. And that's why I think it was private, why people didn't know about it. Oh, absolutely. Because the public is the public, <laughs> you know? Yeah. They said that wasn't what they were. I, I know, Ter Terry. I'm really glad they stayed on top of that as well. Took away my son's computer and he built another one. That's hysterical. <laughs> so yeah, that 13-year-old boy. The mother took away his phone and he, he stabbed her. The, the one that the mother just had a baby a week prior. And um, her son was angry. She took away his phone and, and he stabbed her to death. That's a horrific case. Well, I mean, I don't think it it tells us a lot. It's just they're building their case up against him. They, Because you guys got to remember, they only got one shot at charging him. And if there's any type of reasonable doubt during that trial, he can walk. Yeah. So they've got one chance and one chance at all. So they've got to make sure all their T's and I's are dotted and crossed. Absolutely. Hey, Bombshell. I just prayed I don't give her a plea deal. I don't want to watch another Kayla crap. Absolutely agree, Chica. No more sweetheart deals, especially, and you know, at the very least, we know that Maddie was being abused by her mother's choice of partners or partner under her roof for at least two years. And uh, no, no sweetheart deal. Two incompetents continue to be in that position. Hey, Batgirl. I, I don't know. I think the whole thing is, uh, Horrific. Let's see if, if the grandmom said anything else. She does. Mother added that this Sunday they were celebrating her birthday and that she did not notice any behavior that could indicate plans to run she away. She was very, very happy. All her little friends from school, which are two little friends, it was very nice. She had a happy time, content, took lots of photos, hugged her family. In but my daughter worked the previous night, Sunday. Mm. And it seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her. That is. And now they are not going to wake up in the campaign. I am not oh, carrying. Bring her to what? Sunday night. Wait, bring her to what? The party or to the school? Sunday. Photos, hug their family. Think but my daughter worked the previous night. Sunday. Oh. And my daughter worked the previous night, Sunday. So she called Stefan to pick Maddie and take her to school it Monday. It seems she woke up very tired and told her boyfriend to bring her. That and is now they are not going to wake enough. up in the campaign. I am not carrying and took no, not my no, side. Always mine. And in the church's chambers, they see a girl with a green sweater where mm. she sits in the parking lot for a while. And a few minutes later, she gets up and heads to school. That's all that is known about her. And with every day that passes, it gets worse. One loses hope after almost three days missing we don't know what else to do subtitles by the amara.org in my mind someone took oh. her but i'm wondering in my mind, mind, okay so they're they're constantly saying that they have the only person that has seen this video supposedly of her walking away or the graininess of it is jennifer's sister jennifer was never even showed these videos why why was it just her sister? My understanding is the sister wasn't showing the videos either. She was just told about them. Um, I think the whole thing was a ruse to get him to let down his his guard with the fact that, uh, you know, oh, yeah, you're right. We got footage that you dropped her off. I think it was a way to get him to, you know, soften up a little bit and not, not be, I don't know. I don't know. I I'm mean, green was the school color. So would it be odd that they would see uh somebody in green is it i is it okay if i put the fair use warning out in your chat so that way nobody can say anything to y'all oh yeah it doesn't matter i'm following fair use anyway but you can say whatever you like uh give me one second i have to feed the cat 
but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's really kind of weird to me, this. It, it's all weird. Oh, I would be too. I, I mean, but like, like I say, with a lot of the missing kids cases, we can say we would do this and we would do that and we would be like this and we would be like that. But that's us not being put in that position. Um, I'm not going to say none of us wouldn't do what we're supposed to do. But as of not being put in that position of a missing, being a missing parent, we don't really know exactly how we would feel or what we would do, to be honest. As disgusting as the mistakes made by Ellie, the IA social media situations where we do disregard her or we have to give credit to them not disregarding her as many do with teens. Yeah. A lot of teens, especially 13 and over, they look as maybe as a runaway. So that makes me wonder if they already had something in their mind before that happened. Yeah, they do. They do. They'll lie and get you get you to say what they want you to say. As if you're smart enough to fall for it. Well, they yeah, said mom wasn't yeah. there. And she even said she wasn't there in the second interview. Where? Um, In the park. I mean, when they dropped Maddie off. And in, in the beginning, she was like, we dropped her off. Oh, the yeah, yeah. The mom was, even, yeah, the mom supposedly overslept. That. I get what you're saying, Souls. Maybe the mom was acting like she was Maddie. The fact of the matter is the church, kids apparently gathered there before school. Green is a school color. I, I think the whole video was a rouge, and that's why they never showed the family members. I think at that point, the police already had an idea that something else was going on. Exactly. Yeah. I honestly can't fathom the thought. It takes me. It is. The whole thing's horrific. I, I just, you know, the, I get what you're saying up here, uh, Haunt and Haley, but if that was my daughter, man, yes, I just, I don't, I don't know. If you listen to that, know. another thing. If it was my baby. Like, my daughter went missing. I know I'd be turning everybody's house up and down, but I can't say, I mean, that's how I say now, but if it was really presented to me in that type, I don't know exactly what I would do. Yeah. I don't. Cause I am such a heart. Hor I'm horrible. I'm horrible when it comes to like being upset and I'm horrible. I really am. <laughs> Yeah, it's easy to guess what we would do. I, I just think with <clears throat> the amount of red flags this mother shows, there's there's enough to say. And again, the police have stated it. So I don't think it's too far-fetched to say this mother is is lying. And there's a reason she's lying. And the police will figure it out. They'll find out. And I uh, will get our answers one day. But yeah, I think in the meantime, they're going to build up their case. They're going to look into Jennifer. They're going to look further into uh, Stefan here. And they're going to find out exactly what happened to Maddie. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It was nice meeting you, Dippy. Thank you for coming up. Me too, and I'm so, like, I wrote it in chat. I was like, hey, she's the first person that's ever got my name right the first time. Oh, really? That's yeah. hysterical. <laughs> Most people call me Dippy, and I'm like, you know what? I've, I've it's been really? years with the same name. It's not, it's not even that unusual of a word. I'm surprised people would mess it up. Because there's no, there's not two P's. They're used to it to be D-I-P-P-Y, not D-I-P-E-Y. Uh, I see. That's funny. But hey, I appreciate you letting me come up and chat with you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Fun. Yeah, right, Megan? I got something right, right? I was supposed <laughs> to go live today myself, but I don't know if I'm feeling up to it, so. Yeah, it, just, it's I rainy know. and miserable here. Yeah, I didn't know it was even supposed to rain today. <laughs> I can't stand this weather. Thank you, Chica. But thank you I so very much for letting me come up and chill. Absolutely. Go. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Little did I know that would be typing on a two-inch screen when I was in high school in 1972. Remember we used to say, um, teachers would say, you wouldn't have a, a calculator in your pocket. Cold come through loud on my cold come through loud. On. Hey, Duck and Fox. 
Thank you, Jason. Thank you for coming up. Hey, Millie. I appreciate it. Um, it. It seems like nobody suspected anything. The grandmother here seems like she was completely oblivious to um, <clears throat> Stefan or Jennifer Puffsley knowing anything. And hey, Twist. So seriously, I watched and observed despite my initial buy from mom. But in my opinion, she's not innocent in all this. Well, you know, Hot and Hallie, when the police made that statement that they, they have found a lot of inconsistencies in her, her timeline, and uh, when they were asked if she was now a suspect and they wouldn't comment, that right there told me everything I needed to know. Hey, Sharon and Karen with Miss Chewy, good to see you. Yeah, I, I think less. I think the grandmother's interview. Oh, this breaks my heart. Pretty much wraps up there. Um, oh, look. Described by police, even though they have not specifically named. Look, look, look. I've never seen this photo. Into a video as described by police, even though they have not. I've never seen that, that photo, little family photo there. How disgusting. Oh, Severin, I can't imagine. My prayers go out to, to you and your community and all the loved ones of Maddie and all the, the classmates and the teachers and how many I can't even imagine are impacted by this. This is, this is devastating. And I mean, it's hit us across the world. I can't imagine what it's done to your neighborhood. You as well, Saudi ma'am. Oh, I'm happy you did as well. Thank you. Yeah, this is creepy. This is sad. And, and looking at Maddie, she's about 10 or 11 there. And, and just thinking this, this baby girl, just, she kept her smile and she does look so much like her mother. Um, Let me find a picture of just Maddie and I just remember at the end of our discussions, it is a 13 year old girl and for at least two years documented, she, she lived a nightmare in her own home. If you see something, you say something. I don't care if it's from 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago. If your children say something, you listen. Talk with your children, check in with your children, make sure they know it is a safe place. Make sure that they know that you trust them, you value them. You're going to take them serious. and just, you know, make sure they know their loved, man. And that's one thing I will say throughout every photo I've seen of Maddie, she looks loved and that makes me happy. I just can't even imagine. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't even predict what the outcome of this case is going to be, but I know that I will patiently wait as the police gather up everything they need to make sure that ju that justice is served for Maddie. And I will be patient in the meantime. And again, I, I'm sorry for those who don't like the blaming of the mother, but I will absolutely, without a doubt, come out and apologize if I am wrong. But as of right now, we are, hundreds of us are seeing these red flags and they're waving, they're waving loud and clear. And, and I don't know. Was the mother just oblivious? Was was the mother just given the story that Stefan told her? Was, was she genuinely not realizing that, that this was going to result in Madeline being deceased? And so maybe she went along with his story because he was afraid and, and she knew that he looked suspicious, but she didn't want him to be suspicious. So she was willing to give whatever storyline he had. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure the police will find out. Thank you for joining me here today. If you haven't, please consider hitting a thumbs up. It is a great way to help support the channel. Thank you for becoming members. Thank you, Debbie, for becoming a member. Thank you for coming on panel. Jason, thank you for coming on panel. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of your input in the chat. Uh, sincerely meant a lot to me. I am glad that we can have these type of discussions and everybody has been respectful and, and, and I appreciate that. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Hug your loved ones and remember that in the blink of an eye, life can change. Enjoy every moment that you have.